true. I was part of the team that picked the Jets cheer. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, hey, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's football. It's back. And so is the card. Let's go. Go. Good morning, everybody. Great to have you here. As always, David Jacoby right there. We got my man Green Bay Packer, all the fame of Greg Jennings right there. And Mr. Biggs himself, yeah. Super Bowl champion, Willie Cologne right What's there. Up? And all three of them are buttoned up to the top. It just ain't my style. But you know what? Yeah. You know what is my style? NFL yeah. football. Let's start you off a Thursday morning. Headlines. Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl champions, Detroit Lions, upstarts trying to make some waves in the NFC. And it all kicks off tonight. And of course, the big question is off the field, actually, guys. It's the injury to Travis Kelsey from yesterday with the hyperextended knee. And of course, the contract uh, holdout. With Chris Jones, let's attack uh, Travis Kelsey first, Greg Jennings. Game time <laughs> decision. We all believe, I think we're lockstep on this one, would be surprised if Travis Kelsey plays tonight. Yeah, they're, they're, they're preparing to go without Travis Kelsey. Obviously, it would be great if he can suit up tonight, but Patrick Mahomes has to be special. If no, there's no Travis Kelsey, there's no Chris Jones. We've talked about them at nauseum. However, these other guys that we've talked about, that you've mentioned, why didn't they go out and get another wide receiver? They're looking at an opportunity that can set them up for their future and establish a relationship and a rapport with the guy who we all know to be very special in the center and Patrick Mahomes. So this is a big moment for a lot of these young guys that are going to be pass catchers. That's funny. I was watching highlights earlier this morning. A couple years ago, the Lions and Chiefs played. Chiefs had a lead, minute and a half to go. Kansas City marching down the field, down three. Who was the go-to guy? Travis Kelsey. Oh. And to be fair, a couple unknown Chiefs players, and they're going to have to rely on those guys tonight. Yeah, and what you want to also see if this Super Bowl team that won last year, if they still partying from last year. They understand it's a new season, new year, new outfit. A lot is, a, you know, you talk about Chris Jones being out, you talk about Travis Kelsey. I know when I went through my, you know, after we won my Super Bowl, man, we were not as detailed. We, we just really was. We weren't as detailed. We weren't as focused. We were still going to clubs. We were still thought we were them. And right. it hurt us. So, I know this team has been there before, but this is a new outfit, new look team, with a lot to kind of be said about them. So, we'll see. You like clubs? I was a club. I was young. I was in the clubs. I was I, was party. I wanted to be in the music videos. I wanted to, I wanted to be in the music videos. Yeah, I wanted to He's do like, hey, wow. Nas, we're from the same city. Yeah. Can you get me in your next video? Help me out. I wanted to be with Terra Squad. I the league with it, rock with it. I want it all. We got more on Chris Jones, actually. Our headline number two, uh, I think, impacts Chris Jones a little bit, and that is congratulations to the Bosa family. Nick Bosa gets his deal, and wow, it is a deal hey. and a half. Five years, $170 million. As we talk a lot about these days, the only thing that matters is the guarantee, and the guarantee is stupid. One hundred. million. $22 million, and he will be in uniform and in the lineup as San Francisco starts their voyage to what they think is a Super Bowl. Yeah, and a at, much-deserved at contract, obviously, for Nick Bosa, but if you're the offensive side of the ball and you have Brock Purdy and there's been any type of questions of whether or not he's going to be prepared, this is a great sign. You get your full slate of defensive, defensive guys, the best defensive guy you have on your unit, it takes a lot of pressure off that offensive side of the ball. All the weapons that they have, Nick Bosa being present and knowing that he's going to be in uniform to apply pressure to possibly uh, eliminate some of the, the drives that you have as sure. an opponent, put the ball back in your young quarterback hands and give him more opportunities. This is exciting for the 49ers. Nick Bosa, Defensive Player of the Year, Biggs, is now the highest paid defensive player in the history Big of money. the NFL. I know the beauty of it. When they, if you guys want to put that list back up real quick, you know who's you know, second in guaranteed money, right? His brother. Right? His brother. <laughs> like, what kind of womb does Mrs. Bosa have? <laughs> right. Money. <laughs> Gucci on the walls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like, no joke, like, she gave birth. Yeah, man. <laughs> to the two highest paid defensive players in NFL history. It's insane, man. I mean, if you're the Bosa family, man, everything is swipe, right? There's no reason to have cash. It's going through. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's and there's no reason to check the account. Right. Brothers have it. They're living big. Yeah. I'm happy, proud papa, proud mama. But I tell you one thing. You don't have to worry about this man being in shape either. That's the thing. You know yep. Chris Jones, you may have to worry because he's talked about staying out uh, to week eight. Bosa looks like he, man. Yeah, he's going to be ready to go. If I'm the Pittsburgh Steelers, which I was a former one, you know, we talked about the boogeyman showing up. He will be in the building. So yep. Mike Tomlin, by the way, 
who's good friends with John Lynch, I think he read the tea leaves. I think he called John and was like, hey, bud. Hey, you know, uh, Bosa, what do you think? We're signing them all right. Right, everybody! Yeah. He's going to be in the building. So, uh, it's, it's, it's good for Joe, uh, Nick Bosa, man. I'm Mike Tomlin did say before the signing he that he wasn't sure who he was preparing for. Yeah, now he knows. Now he knows. Oh, he uh, knows. But I think he was tipped off, too. Yeah, I, I'm assuming he prepared for him. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless. Uh, your third headline seems like you might get some good news in Cincinnati as Joe Burrow is no longer questionable as uh, the uh, Bengals put out kind of their... Uh, your injury updates uh, for the week. And Burr himself says, I'm ready to go Sunday against the Cleveland Browns. So I got to lean on that. Looks like he's going to play. Yeah, this is exciting. If you're the Bengals fans, you're like, yes. And, and all the talk about, yeah. you know, potentially starting off 0-2 with the division, I think that played in ways a lot on whether or not he was going to play. He used, we heard him say, look, I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. I don't worry about cons- I don't worry about him being rusty. I don't worry about him being in shape. He look, let's be honest. He plays the quarterback position. Just drop back, throw the ball to those guys on the outside and make some plays. Well, not just that. It's not like they brought in three new wide receivers and a new tight end. It's the same core group yeah. of guys. Yeah. You know, they've a new offensive lineman, but outside of that, it's the offense they've had, same play calls, same play caller, same dudes. So, if there's a guy that's able to just step right in and perform well, you, whether he does or not is up for a debate on Sunday, but he'd be a guy you'd say could do it. Yes, I think my only worry with Burrow is he's he's up for a new contract, right? He's up for an extension. Yes. Uh, a guy that's stepping into two games, division games with two dominant defenses, aren't you worried about getting him injured more before the deal? Like, I would, it's a, it's a small protest, but if I'm him, I'm like, I do want to get paid. I'm dealing with this calf, but I know if I get hurt, I know that contract looks different because I've been hurt in the past. So I think there's cause for concern there, but. If he wants to be out there, I know Greg talked about it yesterday. Sometimes you may have to protect the player from the player, um, but I think his will is going to force him out there. But if I'm him, I, I think I dodged this one and maybe just get ready for both. Well, we got lots more to talk about, of course. We'll uh, give you every side of tonight's game for Detroit and Kansas City. NFL 2023 Here. is now officially underway. Coming up right after the break, we'll get into the Chris Jones situation. He did speak publicly for the first time yesterday, and we've got it for you. Plus, more on Joe Burrow right after this. Hey, guess what? We're back, and Chris Jones isn't yet. So, Chris Jones was at, and I give him a lot of credit for this, every year Kansas City has a uh, charity day at a local hospital, and even though he is uh, still holding out, he showed up. It's and great. that says a lot about Chris Jones. I think it's great that he did it. And he spoke for the first time. Here's the issue. He's trying to make himself seem like a regular blue-collar guy. Quote, unquote, I'm just asking for a raise. A raise. Yeah. Here's out of his own mouth. So, you know, I'm not making it up. Uh, Chris Jones of the Kansas City Chiefs. Go ahead. What can I say? Um, opinions are like buttholes. Everybody got them in their own <laughs> state, right? So, you know, um, and some going to like it, some going to respect it, and some is going to dislike it. Um, that's just the way it is. You can't make everybody happy, unfortunately. Um, as much as you try to do and as much as you try to appease people, you're not going to make everyone happy, unfortunately. I'm sorry. And I'm just asking for a raise. By the way, I, I get that. And he's right. You know, the butthole thing and all that. We all have opinions, and it's not based on anything, right? But he is asking for a raise, but it's not like a blue-collar guy making 50 grand, hoping to make 55 so he can go out to dinner once a month with his family. <laughs> yeah. This is a guy that said, I can eat $10 million in fines, and I'll be just fine. He did say so that. Every, everything is somewhat relative here. But I will say this. I know Bose is a defensive end, and he's a defensive tackle, and we value those positions differently. However... Nick Bosa getting $170 million, I would think, is empowering to the stance that Chris Jones is making because all he has to say now is, look, San Fran values their best defensive player. Do you value me? Yeah, on top of that, you can ask him for a raise and still go to work, right? That's what Jonathan Taylor was doing. Jonathan Taylor was in the building because he understood he needed to be a part of that team, even if the future wasn't bright for him. Chris Jones right now with – the way Kelsey ended up, the way this team needs to be better going into the season after winning the Super Bowl, he was a big impact, especially for that defensive side. So I'm okay with him sitting out, but somehow I would just make a, you know, if you're going to hand out the, you know, whatever blue plates of food, step into the building and kind of shake some hands. Yeah, and that's the thing, Greg, we talked about a lot. Like, you can show up 
not get fined, yeah. and come up with a Fugazi injury uh, that everyone knows is wink, wink, Fugazi, but you don't get fined, you're in the building, you're with the guys, and you never have to step on the field. Yeah, the only, the, my only contest to that is right now what they're going through, Travis Kelsey gets hurt. Now you're in the building and you're holding in. Now all the guys are walking around like, okay, Chris, like that was kind of our ability to say, you, 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 we can get by without you because we got Patrick, we got Andy Reid, we got Kelsey. Right. That was kind of their saving grace. We all believe that the, the Kansas City Chiefs would be okay if, if Chris Jones is out, but they still have those three guys. They don't have two of those guys. <laughs> right. yeah, like right. Chris, no Chris Jones, so you don't know how you're gonna look against the Detroit offense that you know can put up points. And then now you don't have your greatest asset on offense outside of Patrick Mahomes. Like it's pressure on Brett Veach. Well, Get this man back in the building. And here, that's the side. You know, we always look at it unfairly. Well, how come the players doing this? How come the players doing this? I want to flip that script just for a second because what's Kansas City doing? Right? And I don't know exactly how much money he's asking for. We believe it's more than what Quinn and Williams got with the Jets, which is $24 million a year, and just under what Aaron Donald's getting with the Rams, which is 31.5 a year. So call 29, call 30 in that ballpark, right? I think we're all in agreement of that. Yep. So if we all pretty much have an understanding of where the money's going to be, what's Kansas City doing? How does it make good business sense or football sense to leave your best defensive player in his prime hanging out there like that? It's uh, it's interesting to me, and I think that Nick Bosa does play into the Chris Jones situation for this reason, right? Usually with this, it's like price is right. Who's the highest paid at the position? They get 25. All right, I want 25.5. But what Nick Bosa did is there's a gap in annual value and guaranteed value yeah. that's substantial. And I feel like if you're Chris Jones, you're like, I don't want to just – get over what Quinny Williams got. I want a couple mil more than Quinny Williams got, and I think that might even complicate this negotiation more than help the negotiation. And here's the problem. When you reference Price is Right, there's always that one jackass that goes, I wager a dollar. <laughs> <Right? laughs> yeah. And that's what the Chiefs are doing. A dollar. I'm assuming the three idiots next to me went over. I'm going to bet a dollar. Um, it just doesn't make sense, and now it's real because there's a game tonight. Yeah. Now, you guys have reiterated, but I'm going to call you on and ask you one more time. If Chris Jones shows up tonight, is he Chris Jones? I would think so. I, I, I don't think he, you know, listen, I think he, what he brings value to when we talked about it is the fourth quarter, right? He's able to collapse the pocket, get after a, a pocket passer. You know what he can do with pressures. He's, I mean, you see the list right can here. Can he just show up and be Chris I Jones? I think so. I think it would, be, it, would, it would be nonsense if he showed up out of shape and doesn't look like the football player we know him to be. I think hold it would on, be a trouble. Hold on. They sign, they sign Nick Bosa on Wednesday to play on Sunday. Right. I don't see a scenario in which they sign Chris Jones on Thursday to play on Thursday. I mean, if they sign so, him today, so they expect me, him to play. So I bet. For me, so. this I, is this is if shocked. Chris Jones is on the field, he impacts the game. Because if you're now Detroit, you now have to double this guy. So now, where you're going to a game where you're looking like we're pretty good up front. And we don't, we don't really have to double anyone. They don't have anyone that solidified themselves as a threat to where we got to pay attention to this guy right. and double him and send two. Chris Jones showing up frees up other guys. Now you have one-on-one -on -one matchups. It looks completely different for the Kansas City Chiefs and Spagnolio, the defensive coordinator. And so, yes, him just being there. I don't need him. You have him to, to take him seriously you from the other side. Oh, yeah, I, I got you. All right. Yeah. Uh, coming up in a little bit, we'll tell you how good the Chiefs have been with Patrick Mahomes in their week one games and how bad the Detroit Lions have been in their week one games. It ain't pretty, folks. But tonight's the night it all changes. Yes, By the way, speaking of changes, you know, Joe Burrow's uh, come off the questionable list uh, for this game uh, coming up uh, week one against the Cleveland Browns. He is going to play because we were just talking about all the other quarterbacks. If his year that deserve the money have gotten paid, he's the only guy that hasn't yet agreed to a contract. And here's Joe Burrow. Go ahead. You've seen what what the front office has done and what Zach has done in their time here, and you know I'm a I'm a small part of that, and you know I'm excited to be a part of that. And we have great people in the locker room that grind every day that you know are excited to go and showcase their talents and excited to do it in the city of Cincinnati. You know we have the best fans, and so this is this is where I want to be. 
It's where he wants to be, and he doesn't have a contract yet. And I know you're not suggesting he sit out as part of a contract ploy, but it's a worthy conversation. You're coming off uh, what seems to be a relatively serious calf injury. You have not gotten the big guaranteed contract like Herbert got, like Jalen Hurts got, like Josh Allen, who's before you got. And you're sitting there. And you know they're going to give you the money, but you haven't gotten the money yet, and you're an injury, injury risk. How do you handle that? You play. I, I look, I, I don't look at it as a – I get it's it. It's business. It's business. Yeah. It's business. But you also are looking at it if you're a competitor. Like, okay, the Cleveland Browns have Deshaun Watson. Well, if Deshaun Watson shows up and he's back to the Deshaun Watson of old, they have an elite quarterback. If we In week two, if, if Lamar Jackson, if this all looks and fits – the way that they're hoping that it does, they're, they have an elite quarterback That's with right. a great offense and a new look. That's a threat. We don't have our elite quarterback. You can't take that risk. Yes, they started on two last year. I've been all over that. But to start on two and it, one of those games is not a division game, it's different when you have an AFC North that's going to look different because of the Pittsburgh Steelers and what the potential of Deshaun Watson brings. But his contract is tied. It's not just solely tied to himself. It's tied to T. Higgins. It's tied to Jamar Chase. So what he decides to do contractually will impact them moving forward in the future, whether they look differently. I will give Joe Burrow credit for this. He, of all the quarterbacks, you know, prior to those guys getting signed, he was the only quarterback that came out and said, I'm very sensitive to the fact if I take all the money, and I could, yeah. that's going to make it very hard for us to keep the core group of talent I've had around me. So right now, he's got no money, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we sit right now. So more on Joe Burrow coming up. It is a big, big day, though, if you're a Cincinnati Bengal fan, that he is going to play. And I'll tell you why he's going to play. Because the Bengals are worried. The Bengals are scared. The Bengals are nervous. <laughs> what are they scared now, of, Craig? They're scared of the Cleveland Browns. Uh -oh. They're scared of the Baltimore Ravens. And, and believe it or not, they're scared of Kenny Pickett. Of course. And the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> of course, Pickett's big. And I, my recommendation to Bengals fans is stay on the porch with your dog. If you're scared, just stay right there. <laughs> Everything will be okay. You're just not winning the division this year. <laughs> just the way it goes. By the way, how do you know when an NFL player has made too much money in his lifetime? Any quick answers to that or no? When they can sit out? No, not wow. when they can sit out. When they buy a reversible diamond-studded chain oh, of his uh, high school number good, and college number and pro number, uh, that right there is Ezekiel Elliott with the reversible. I'm assuming those aren't fake diamonds, Greg. I'm hoping they're not yeah, fake diamonds. Fake. But he's got the 21. You reverse it to the 15. I do not make enough money. That's what I learned from that right there. And he has made too much money. I was a big chain guy. I ain't of gonna course lie. You were. You're, 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 you're a big chain I guy. Was. I had a chain. I had a big golden necklace. And the, uh, the medallion was. I, so when I got my first contract, I brought a cane corsa. I never had a dog. So I right. had a dog. So yeah, I, I got I, two of them. I brought. I had a, a, a molded face of my dog on my big chain. Hold wait, on. Wait, 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 wait. Are you, yeah. wait. So you spent. You're I didn't even have money. a car. I didn't even have a car. And you had a face <laughs> of dog. I brought a face dog and I brought chain. a gold chain. So you <laughs> bought a dog and yeah. it was said, how do I top that? Let me buy a chain <laughs> of the dog. What his name on the back? His name was Bishop. I love him. That was my, that was my best. But first friend. of all, I love Bishop too, but I love you a little bit less after that. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. You, I just lost a little I, respect I, for you. All I'm saying, I get it. I was all about the chains. So yeah. I'm, I'm not a chain guy, but yeah. if I were a chain guy, this is this is the way to do it. The number? This is the way to do it. We're reversible because yeah. God, for whatever reason, we are tied to our numbers. Yes. I yeah. would like it's, oh, it's, 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 it's a part of us for life. I see 15 there. I see is. <laughs> I just see the word is. No, People's over it says is. is. No, That's all I see. Is, yeah. is him? <laughs> I see 15. I see 20. Can you bring that chain into it? I'm going to try to find a picture for it. Is Bill Belichick going to give me some carries? Is Mac Jones going to be a good quarterback? Hey, hold on. <laughs> I know we got to take a break. You're defending the purchase by saying, I got a, I got a lot of compliments. It was so big sometimes. <laughs> Those weren't real compliments. Not it was. It was so big that I had to say you something. It wasn't something mean. The, the only problem is if I was eating soup, it would get in my soup. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we got to see that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that was the problem. Come, coming up, <laughs> Mike, my McCarthy, face. Mike yeah. McCarthy talked about Micah Parsons and what they expect to be a potential DP. OY year. That stands for deep. Well, you know what it stands for. <laughs> it's early. Maybe you know. Were the eyes a different color? Were the eyes like rubies? Yeah, they were.
You know the happiest guy with, with that doesn't have the last name Bosa is a guy named Parsons. Micah Parsons, of course, uh, trying to become Defensive Player of the Year. Nick Bosa was. He just got a gazillion dollars guaranteed by San Francisco. Mike McCarthy talked about how Micah is trying to seize on the opportunity to be great across the board. Go ahead. He's a sponge-like. He's a quarterback type uh, personality. And I, I don't mean it. I mean that in a positive way, where he's you know he's he's really into everything, you know. So uh, he is a great example of carpe omnia because he's just trying to seize everything. Carpe omnia. Uh, car- what? Carpe mm-hmm. omnia. What position does carpe omnia have? I have no idea. Uh, what college did he go to? Yeah, I've heard of carpe diem. I never heard of carpe <laughs> omnia. Yeah. And if it's on me, I want it off. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> right. Get off. Get on. I don't know what the hell that is. Right. Yeah, I tell you what. When a coach starts talking Latin, I'm out right away. <laughs> but it's, you know, look, everyone knows that Micah Parsons is a beast, right? He is arguably the best defensive player because, you know, he doesn't just fit a simple, you are defensive end. You are a middle linebacker. You are a safety. He's a rare athlete in that he can line up in a lot of places. So when you consider now the contract that Nick Bosa just got, right, off of his rookie deal, if I'm Micah Parsons and Nick Bars- Bosa gets $34 million bucks a year, that's the AAV. Well, I want 40 And he's yeah. going to get it. He's going to get it because of how much he means to that team. We there talked about the power shift that's going on in Dallas. He wants to spearhead that. And if, what he's going to do is about to go. I think he's about to go off. I think he's going to be out to be in a tear. And I think what, what we see out of Micah Parsons, you see him at the outside linebacker position. He can also stand up. He can rush from anywhere on the field, and he can cover on top of that. You understand, this guy was a former running back in high school, so he's extremely athletic. Yeah. So I'm really excited to see what he's going to do this year, and he's going to get the bank for sure. Is there, like you guys always talk about, you even said earlier today we were talking about, you know, Nick Bosa being on the field, or like what, what's Mike Tomlin going to do game planning wise? How in the world do you game plan for Micah Parsons? You, you really don't. You, you can't really game plan for him. You just can help guys out that's gonna be faced, that he's going to be faced up against because you have to try to minimize his impact on the game, which is really hard to do. But I, go, going back to what you said, his value to this team, he, he is this team. Mm-hmm. If Michael Parsons is not on that field, this team looks completely different. Yeah. Defensively, offensively, all the pressure now is solely on Dak and can you shoulder the load. So for me, he... What Joey Bosa is getting, it even shoots through the roof because his value to his team is even greater than Joey Bosa's because of the depth that they have over in over in San Francisco. With Mike Michael Parsons, if you don't have this guy, we do not believe that the Cowboys are yeah. anything close to what they are going yeah. into this season. I know they're both white, but it's Nick Bosa. Nick Bosa, yeah, it's their brothers. Not, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. It's okay. I'm, I'm, Nick, Joey, Look, they're one and two. <laughs> they're brothers. They're one and two. Nick, you know I'm talking about you. Yeah, Joey, fine. I'm sorry, man. But, you got to get back. Help when Mike McCarthy said there. this, he was like, he's going to seize everything. Carpe omnia, right? And, yeah. And what he meant was like play <laughs> defense and grab the ball. But in the wake of the Nick Bosa news, now he's talking about the salary cap. He's like, he's going to seize everything because if Nick Bosa is making, what, 122 guaranteed? Yeah. Michael Parsons has got to be looking at 140. Well, in that ballpark, for sure. That's why I said, outside of the Bosa family, the next happiest family out there, assuming he stays healthy, has got to be Michael Parsons because uh, I'm a little bit younger and I play three positions, maybe four, exactly. and I am the defense. And he feels like I'm better than Nick Bosa. Right. Period. Like, like think he about, should feel that way. Think about the chip that he plays with, knowing that Nick Bosa is defensive player of the year. He feeling like he's the best edge rusher. He's the best linebacker in the National Football League. Like, he's going to be playing with even more of a chip. And this is a guy that's intrinsically motivated. He doesn't need any external motivators. But this is one now. Nick Bosa gets this much money. I'm happy for you, but I'm deserving of even more. Yes, and again, you can't put any of those guys in that list down. They are dominant defensive Dollars. players, but none of them play multiple positions. None yeah. of them do. Yeah. It, Bosa, I'm a defensive end. I'm lining up on Edge the left rusher, side. Yeah. That's where I'm going to be. Stop I'm out in coverage. Mike yeah. is on the left side. Mike is slot. on the right yeah. side. <laughs> Mike is in the in middle. coverage, right. in man-to-man, yeah. in zone. Like, Micah does so many things. He's so versatile. So it's like Nick Posa, he's got his hand in the dirt, and he's an edge rusher. Guess what? Micah Parsons does that 
better, if not equal and, to him, and he does what, so much more. And that's where you credit Dan Quinn. He knew that out the gate. As soon as he got him, as soon as he got him out of Penn State, he was a rookie. He's like, man, I don't know what you're thinking, but you're gonna play everything. You're gonna be everything. You're gonna be in the middle. We're gonna have you on the edge. We're gonna have you cross dogging. Wherever you're at, you will be a menace, and, and he's been able to utilize that. And think that. about the compliment that Mike McCarthy paid to Michael Parsons. He compared him to the quarterback. He's like a quarterback. Yeah. The most important asset that of any Good 30 point. of all 32 teams is your quarterback. Mm -hmm. He's saying that about his defensive end slash outside all linebacker, everything. all world everything. Yep. Correct. Is he but, your defensive player of the year? He was second last year. Yeah, he's, I, he's tired of coming in second. I mean, I think if, if, he's, he's, if he's healthy for me, he's the best easily, defensive player yeah, in football. Right? I don't agree. think, by the way, I don't think it's close. I agree. And now to, you know, I, I think because he plays multiple positions and he can run up left, right, and center, he can drop back in pass coverage. Yep. He can get to the quarterback. He can come around the edge and stop a sweep. I think he's just the most dominant defensive player in the game. So the season starts tonight. Yeah. So before the season kicks off, I want to get a couple of predictions. One from each of you, and we'll discuss. We'll start with you, Mr. Yeah. Carton. Are yes, you ready? Sir. I'm ready to go. We Here always we talk go. about yes. the – I wish my last name was Bosa. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not question. the question. Not the question. <laughs> okay, go ahead. We always talk about the AFC North. As, yeah. as we collectively feel is the best division in football. Sorry, AFC East. But who do you think will come out of this hotly contested division? I think three teams come out of the North playoff-wise. But the question is who wins the AFC yes. North, which I think is where you're getting at. Um, all my eggs are in the Baltimore Ravens basket. I think they are a problem for everybody. And I respect the fact that it's been the Bengals division and Deshaun Watson's back. Cleveland's going to be good. But I don't know that there's a team that's ever been as loaded offensively in the last three or four years the way the Baltimore Ravens are. MVP quarterback, five legitimate uh, pass catching weapons between Mark Andrews, OBJ, Zay Flowers, the return of guys who've been hurt like Bateman, etc. Their run game is underappreciated and they have an above average defense. Great coach. They've won before. And I think you are looking at a 5,000 yard season from Lamar Jackson. Ooh. And I, I think it's close. I don't think anyone runs away with the division, but to answer your question, I think the Baltimore Ravens will be kings of the AFC North. It is the only division in which I could see all four teams potentially winning, even the Steelers. But, like, they, we always talk about the AFC East as well. The Patriots, not a chance. You could have all four being over 500. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I do think they get three teams into the playoffs. They're that good. I think so, too. Now, Mr. Jennings, we go to you. There's a wow. lot of quarterbacks where this is sort of a make-it-or-break-it year. So which quarterback, before we start week one, do you feel is under the most pressure in the entire league? This is a layup. Man, thank you. This is Russell Wilson. I mean, he, his, career, his, his career is on the line. Like, I know we see all these quarterbacks up here. Russell Wilson, your face should be up here behind us as well. If you don't have the season that Sean Payton is looking for, you may very well be out of a position and out of this league. Like, it is – is this make, we talk about Dak Prescott, make it or break it. Yeah. Russell Wilson cannot have the type of season anywhere remotely close to what he experienced and we experienced last season. This is a, a, a quarterback that we understand he's, went to, he's gone to two Super Bowls. He's won one Super Bowl. The expectation was for him to come in and allow this team to be a, a contender to compete to win a Super Bowl. I believe they have that opportunity this year. If he gets back, if he does it, his career is on the line. I, I just want to push back. I, I think it's Aaron Rodgers. I'm with you on that. Really? I, yeah, he's I brought think in as a savior. He's brought in to be the next he's, Jesus he's, Christ. He's, he's had City. one foot in retirement they, yeah. the last three offseasons. They've How customized the whole mean? organization to Aaron Rodgers. He's been like, faking retirement so, for three years. That's I don't not pressure. That. I'm not, no, it's pressure because of the, the media. Because he's in a team where he's had to come in and pretty much perform surgery, revamp Makai Becton, be a father to Zach Wilson, <laughs> uh, absolutely put Woody Johnson on what the coaches should look like for a winning team. I mean, the man has had to come in and do open heart surgery for the New York Jets. They have, and Craig has admitted to this, they have to, they have to do everything to make Aaron get here. Now he's here. He has to deliver, especially on Monday night against yeah, the Buffalo see, Bills. I think if we went back 12 months, Russell Wilson's the answer. Um, because he was brought in to do yes. for Denver what we're asking Aaron Rodgers to do for the Jets. And it's all on Aaron Rodgers. He's brought in to save a franchise. Save. Russell Wilson already had the bad year. He didn't save the franchise. So my money's on Aaron Rodgers. Yep. Willie, this one's for you. Go in, ahead, the NFC, <laughs> in the NFC, all we talk about is Eagles, Niners, Cowboys. Eagles, Niners, Cowboys. Yeah. What team outside of those three in the NFC could you see contending for a Super Bowl? 
I'm going with the New Orleans Saints. Yeah, you are. Let's go. Yeah, Who that nation? Yes, Derek second, Carr. Second easiest schedule. That is true. Listen, I think they're going to have 2,000-yard receivers and Chris Olave and Michael Thomas. I also think Derek Carr doesn't get a fair chance. I think he, he deserves a little grace. We got to understand what he went through with the Raiders. Multiple head coaches. The Antonio Brown nightmare. The Henry Rugg situation was a lot to unwrap. You talk about this man. Not only knock on him, he's had back in the last two seasons, he's had back-to-back 14 interception seasons. That's not good. That's not the only that, uh, that's not guys good. never want a playoff game. That's, that's another one. I'm just giving you one that I feel like shit. <laughs> my point there, Greg. I think, he landed, I think he landed in New Orleans, man, and he doesn't have to be the savior. Yeah. He finally landed at, at, with a team that has a defense. They have a system in place where he can just now just be the quarterback and not wear multiple hats. So I'm giving it to New Orleans Saints. Who that? Good luck this Michael year. Thomas has played three games a year over the last four years. <laughs> <laughs> um, I might have said the New York Giants there, but I wasn't asked. Coming up, <laughs> <laughs> we got first in football for you. And do the New York Jets with Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook have the best running back duo in football? And which one of them is started? The Jets have announced it. We'll give you that answer next. Ooh, I I that. Oh, wow. If you're just waking up, good morning. Thanks for joining us here on the Card Show. NFL football is back. You've got the Kansas City Chiefs at the Detroit Lions. Tonight, Kansas City favored by about six points last time I checked. And what does that mean for Detroit? Well, you might oh, you might, you might, might think this anyway because he's <laughs> such a good quarterback, but he dominates week Woo. one. Patrick Mahomes is five. Look at the TD oh. interception. <laughs> Eight teams and he's never thrown an interception week he one? never thrown an interception. What? <laughs> they average 37 points a game. Now, are these be, real numbers? That's the minimum. Is this real? Yeah. Now, to be fair, they've averaged 37 points a game. He's never thrown an interception. Uh, if you believe in statistics, that has to come to an end. <laughs> if you believe in statistics. At some point, and there's no Tyree kill for another year. There may not be Kelsey tonight. And who's he throwing the football to? Hopefully the Detroit Lions a couple times. And just very quickly, from a gambling standpoint they're also four and one against the spread in uh, in week one and the Detroit Lions have not won an opening game in the NFL since 2017 Woo. <laughs> and now it's time for first of football first of football coming at you the team that Craig has winning the AFC North is the Baltimore Ravens yes. and Odell Beckham Jr. new receiver on the team with the reworked receivers room had this to say about his colleagues whoever's in has got to be the one to make plays and they need to come out whoever's coming in is going to make plays like that's the mentality we carry in that room uh, is we're, we're going to make plays uh, so I'm just excited to be a part of this um, this is you know the best group I've played with Right now, in this moment, <laughs> he, he's not, uh, he gets it. Yeah. He gets it. <laughs> right now, in yeah. this moment, he's also not lying. This very well could be the best wide receiving group in the entire NFL, not just in his career. And the beauty of it is depth, right? Guys do get hurt, you know, him more than anybody, with torn ACLs. But they have the ability where there's always going to be two or three fresh wide receivers on the field. Yeah, there's a tremendous amount of intrigue when you look at them offensively and what they have the potential to do. My only question is, we've never seen them lead with the pass first Good point. if you're in Baltimore. Yeah. This, is, this is going to be a year where we're going to say, okay, Lamar, this is what you've asked for. This is what you've been calling everybody around the NFL and saying, I can do this. And we got to see it. You know, it's funny you mention that real quick is that a lot of times teams will say, okay, we're going to make sure we get the quarterback signed up. And then the, there's either not enough money or cap space left over to then give him the weapons to go win with. Baltimore did everything. They gave him the money. Done. They drafted Zay Flowers. Done. They gave Odell Beckham $15 million. Done. They get Bateman back from injury. Done. They still have one of the best tight ends in football in Andrews. Done. So they didn't just say, we're going to pay you to keep you happy. It is, we paid you to keep you happy, and we gave you all these toys to play with. That is rare in the NFL. There's pressure on Lamar, but there's also pressure on the offensive quarter, Todd Munkin, who was the former OC with the Bucs, who literally was was averaging 24 points a game when uh, when he was with the Bucs. So they're going to have to work hand in hand. They're going to have to be on the same accord because Greg is right. Now we're going to do it your way, Lamar. You want it to bag? Let's see if you can actually handle that. And it's on Todd Munkin to say, hey, I don't know what you do best yet, 
but we're going to pass a little bit more because we got to be more explosive and we got to help this defense out and we got to put more points on the, on the board. Moving on to second and football. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens have this man to contend with in the division. That is Deshaun Watson of the Browns. I think it's safe to say that we didn't see the real Deshaun Watson last year, but he had this to say about how he's developing for this season. You know, I don't want to return as a guy to Houston. I want to be better than that guy. So what I was, what is it, 2023, three years ago, I'm not the same guy. So um, I feel like I've improved, I've evolved to a new level, um, and I'm ready to be able to show that. Well, listen, we didn't see it last year in the six games he played. No. Obviously, you don't see a lot of him in the yeah. preseason, but they gave him a quarter of a billion dollars to be the Houston Texan guy, if not better. Uh, so him evolving, I'm assuming he's saying as a football player there, uh, maybe as a person too, he's matured and has been through the ringer pretty good. If he's better than he was as a Texan, the Cleveland Browns are going to be an awfully good football team. Well, I think that's code for I'm not as stressed as I was when I landed here. Right? right. When they were, that's, that's, <laughs> that's how I perceived it. Yeah. There was a lot of fire when I landed here. Yeah. They were literally protesting out of the stadium, talking about they didn't want me in town. I think he's gotten all that behind him. I think he has a full offseason where he can digest and understand that this offense is now custom and built for him solely, and now he's going to be able to be efficient within it. So hopefully and, he has a hell of a year. And there are nationwide chains of professional masseuses that it's okay to use. Like, you don't have to go on Instagram to find You them. would be the guy. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. would be that guy. Just putting it out there. So let me just say this. Is it a little bit of a concern that he said, what is it, 2023? Like, I want my quarterback to know the year off the top of the head. Like, it shouldn't be like, so what is it now, 2023? It's like, so you're the leader of He's this been whole football team? I'm guilty of that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I thought today was Tuesday, yeah. to be honest. It does take me, like, a, a beat to think of my own age. I'm like, I'm like, like when was I born? Oh, yeah. That's how you know you get you're old when you yeah. get your yeah. age. Yeah. Moving on to third and football. There's a lot of discussion about the Jets and Dalvin Cook. Yes. But it's almost like we forgot about Brees Hall and the rest of the running backs on the Jets. Craig, you're a Jets fan. I've yeah. heard that before. You may have heard that. Let's listen to Dalvin Cook praise his colleagues. For the whole collective group, I feel like the sky's the limit smile. for us, man. You know, I walk in here with a smile on my face each and every day because I know, you know the yeah. talents we possess in that running back room. And I feel like you know, for the world to see what's about to happen, you know, it's something special, and it's something you should smile about every day you go to work. First of all, he's smiling because he got $8 million. Look at right. that smile. <laughs> Secondly, he's so smiling because he looks like Ed Reed. <laughs> and thirdly, uh, it is now official, Dalvin Cook is not the starting running back for the New York Jets Monday night uh, against the Buffalo Bills. Brees Hall will be their starting Wait, hold running on. back. Where's this information coming from? Coming from I've the New York Jets. This. The New York Jets put out their depth chart yesterday, late yesterday, and Brees Hall is the starting running back for the wow. New York Jets, not Dalvin Cook. Now, he's on a pitch count. Dalvin's going to get probably as much, maybe more, opportunities and carries and passes, you know, on swing and bubble plays and all that stuff. But Brees Hall is the New York Jets starting running back. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm happy that he is because we also got to remember the tweet that uh, when Zeke had came out and said, hey, man, I'm looking for a home. And Brees is like, we're good over here. So now that mm. that's happened, he's a, now he's the lead back. Dalvin now has to understand. I don't have to show this load so much. I got a young running back who's coming off a knee who's willing to let me in the room, be welcoming. There's no drama. I think it's a good start. And by the way, you need two running backs. Yeah, it, look, it doesn't matter who's the starting running back. Right? They're both going to see a lot of time. Obviously, we know what Dalvin Cook, four-time pro bowl, like 1,000-yard right. seasons consecutive, I think it's three or four. Like, we know what he brings to the table. We also got a glimpse of what Brees Hall can be in, in, to this team in, this, in that backfield. And it was pretty special last season when they didn't have a quarterback. Now you got Aaron Rodgers and you added Dalvin Cook in the backfield and all the other things. It's going to be exciting. And if you're wondering who 8K Mike is in the tweet we put up on the screen there indiscriminately, it's Michael Carter, who's another one of the running backs yep. on the New York Jets. And he's kind of, you know, you're pumping the guys up. Yep. I think our running back room's pretty good. Yep. Pretty good. Like, Dalvin Cook is a vet. He doesn't need the ego boost of being named the starter. And I think someone like Breek Hall coming off an injury. He needed it. It's also the respectful it thing to do. Yeah, like, exactly. Breek Hall lost his job because he got hurt. Yeah. And he came all the way back. He's ready to rock and roll in really short order. Most guys take a full year or more, especially at running back. So the fact that he's come all the way back, I think it's a respect thing too. And guys do appreciate that. Um, it's fourth down. Should we go for it? Let's go for Let's it. Let's go for it. Fourth in football. Okay. Now we're going to the Jaguars. A lot of people are picking them. A lot of hype around them in the preseason. They face the Indianapolis Colts and rookie quarterback Anthony Richardson. Head coach Doug Peterson of the Jaguars had this player comp huh. about Richardson heading into week one. 
It's tough. These are, you know, you, you think of him, you think of Cam Newton. These, these are big, Who? physical, strong Cam quarterbacks that can they can also throw the football, hats. and they're athletic. And, um, you know, it, it is a challenge. That's Doug Peterson kindly saying we're going to beat them by 30. 35. <laughs> and he's not going to be disrespectful <laughs> to a young rookie quarterback. Physically, obviously, look, he's very similar to Cam Newton. Cam Newton was also an NFL MVP. He was Those are big black. shoes to fail. <laughs> and he was black. He yeah. is? That helps, by the way. He is? That helps. Look at that vertical. I'm just going to leave it there. Seriously, this, is, this goes to me, too. Yeah. Do we ever compare... Like, you can't do a cross racial comparison. You know what I mean? Do we ever do it? Not allowed. Not allowed. Not allowed. Yeah. It is not allowed. I, I'm trying to think of a time we never happened. Like, no, it it's never happened. You're not allowed to do it. No. no. I can't. No. I can't. I can't. Maybe in the NBA, probably not. <laughs> no. Nope. Right. Nope. I can't. Nope. I can't. You know, I think it just reminds me of Tom Brady. Yeah, like we don't <laughs> do that. No. Any, anyhow, we got much more coming your way as the NFL makes its triumphant return tonight. Detroit, Kansas City, and we got you top to bottom covered on what's going to happen tonight's game right after this. Good morning and welcome back to the Cardinals Ooh. show. Let's start with the headlines. It is tonight. Finally. Tonight. In the words of Tim Hardaway, tonight. <laughs> Week one in the NFL starts with the Super Bowl champion Chiefs hosting the Detroit Lions and there will be no Travis Kelsey in Ooh. my opinion. There will be no Chris Jones in my opinion. Ooh. And it doesn't matter because he's still going to win in my opinion. Well, here's Craig. the problem. That my, Patrick, I, and I'm going to read from a sheet I ordinarily don't do that. Uh, Patrick Holmes, 5-0 in his career as a week one starter. In yeah. those five games, he's averaged 308 passing yards per game. <laughs> he is uh, 18 touchdowns. How many two, interceptions? Zero. Zero. <laughs> interceptions. A 72.5% completion percentage and a passer rate that doesn't exist. So why are the Lions going to win? the charts. They're also, and the key part is the bottom of that screen there, the last thing in white, they're averaging essentially <laughs> 38 points a game in their season opener. And here come the Detroit Lions like lambs Dun, to the snap. Thank you. Except that this year it's going to be different. Wrong. Come on. I made Wrong. It in statistics. Wrong. And at some point, all runs come to an end. And today is the day. Tonight is the night where that comes to an end. Wrong. Yeah, I think the Detroit Lions are going to be better because their Wrong. offensive line and their run game led by Jamar Gibbs, who I'm excited to see. I love Jared Goff. And by all accounts, this defense will be better. Because of C.J. Gardner-Johnson. You just said, I love. I love Jared Goff. No one's ever said that. His I wife has never said that. Yeah. He's a fighter. They he's traded him so they could win the Super Bowl. And he's bitter. And that chip on his shoulder will be seen tonight. He will carry that. The only thing we need to win the Super Bowl is to get you out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Rams said. <laughs> That's what we need. They did. Less you, you still gotta love more Super Bowl. And he has a hot fiance, so that also counts that in works. my world. Yeah. And look, obviously everyone's going to lean on Kansas City, rightfully so. Like, they're a dominant team. They're also the best week one team in the last five years uh, with Patrick Mahomes. Can't dispute it. But all of a sudden, there are little chinks in the armor. Chris Jones probably yep. not playing tonight. <laughs> Chink in the armor. Travis Kelsey, hyperextended knee, probably not playing tonight. Chink in the armor. And while Mahomes can make you know, lemonade out of lemons for sure, you are now seeing little things starting to erode the dominance of a great team. On the flip side, you have this young kind of up-and-coming team that for the first time in 30 years, and that's not an exaggeration, no, it is has not. a legitimate chance yeah. to win their division and even play some postseason football. So those two things are kind of colliding tonight. And look, if Kansas City wins, none of us are going to be surprised but I do think it is a very close game. Yeah, you talk about Patrick Mahomes making lemonade out of lemons, and one of the ways he can do that tonight is by relying on those guys that they're interchangeable. And those guys, in my opinion, Sky Moore and Kadarius Toney. Sure. Like, they're going to be a fo huge focal point because if you don't have Travis Kelsey, who operates in that middle of the field in the slot, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see a lot of Kadarius Tony. If you look at the top in the slot, you're going to see a lot of Kadarius Tony running those routes that we see Travis Kelsey run. A lot of the interchangeability of he and Sky Moore running those similar routes that you always are accustomed to seeing 87 going across the middle of the field. And if they are able to fulfill that void, 
then the Kansas City Chiefs can still be successful. However, to your point of all those stats, that yeah. 5 and 0, those 18 touchdowns, oh, yeah. all that. That's a game. Don't that all the, I, I, I hear all that. That's That's been with Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey sure. always being present on the field in week ones. Yeah. They don't have that. No, nope. that's what I say. There are little, like, you try to erode, you know, what they've done. And there's little things. Chris Jones is a big thing, obviously. Right. It's just going to be interesting because the strength of the Detroit Lions, for me, you guys obviously disagree, they can score. This offense is going yeah, to put points score. on the board. And Kansas City, look, if you told me Kansas City wins the game 35-32, it ain't going to shock me. But this is not going to be roll the ball out, bing, Kansas City wins. Carpe uh, Adumidem. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think their defense is going to be better. That's the question. I think you're talking about Brian Branch. You're talking about Jack Campbell, who's Brian or like a 2.0. They're going to be a better defense because the defensive coordinator, Aaron Glenn. I think he's going to have mixed coverages, multiple things to put pressure on uh, Patrick Mahomes. And I think this won't be the Lions defense that we saw last year. They have more key pieces and more impact players. I think it's going to be a challenge for the Kansas City Chiefs. Whatever yeah. side you take. It's just good, right? Let's, yeah, let's yeah, enjoy it back. Yeah. Like football, real yeah. football Ooh, is back. Ooh. Also back, our second headline, oh. Nick Bosa Ooh. is back in a 49er uniform. Yeah. $122 million guaranteed. Can you say that again? $122 million guaranteed. Wow. $170 million potential for him over the next five years, making him the highest paid defensive player ever. And his head coach, Kyle Shanahan, seemed very relieved about this whole situation. <laughs> you know, you try not to think about it much because it's not its not really in my control and you just got to let the process play itself out. Once um, it kind of went through the weekend, I just kind of got in my mind that we weren't playing with them. Um, so, because if I would have gone back and forth, that would have been miserable. So I just decided we weren't. Um, I think our team was ready to not, and we are, that was our mindset this way. And um, it was a hell of a bonus to just get told that coming in here. So we're obviously real excited about it. You know, there's, a, I think, a fair juxtaposition between Shanahan and Andy Reid regarding Nick Bosa and Chris Jones, which I know we're going to get to in a second. And that is Shanahan, a week ago, we played it for you out here on the show, said, look, these things usually get done at the last minute. Uh, in my experience, that's when it gets done. My belief is that's going to get done. And he's right. It got done, you know, uh, Wednesday. So, what, four days before uh, San Francisco plays Pittsburgh to open up their season. The flip side of that is Andy Reid. Andy Reid said about Chris Jones, I have no idea. I'm not involved with it. I only coach the guys that are here. That shows you, I think, fundamentally where the two franchises are in regards to giving their best defensive players the money that they want. That's a really good point because – if you look at the Chris Jones situation, it just seems like he's ready to hold out until week eight. Yes. He wants his money. He'll give up money to make more money long term. Whereas Nick Bosa thing, it was a couple days ago, Kyle Shanahan was like, historically, it gets done. these things find a way to figure it out. And right. the difference between signing on Wednesday to play on right. Sunday. Now, let's take that to the next step. That also means that John Lynch told Kyle Shanahan, we're close. We're exactly. going to get it exactly. done. And in Kansas City, uh, Vreach, right? What's Vreach, Vreach, right? The GM in Kansas City told Andy Reid, we ain't close. You That's all, what's happening. And on, t on top of that, we're going to pull up a graphic and show you the Niners are spending this money and they got a lot of it, which puts a lot of onus on. They're trying to win now. Not every structured Big Trent Williams, the left tackle, and they restructured George Kettle, to my knowledge. But overall, look at that. $170 million for Bosa. Yeah. Talking about Fred Warner, $95.2 million. Uh, Armstead, 85. Hargraves, you know, 84. How do I they mean, spend all that money? They're spending it. So this puts a lot of pressure on this team. We got to win now. And they did it by getting Nick Bosa back in the building. So John, uh, John Lynch and... Uh, they, they, they're writing them checks. I would say this. That would bother me if I'm a fan of, like, the New York Giants when Saquon doesn't get a couple extra million or the Raiders and Josh Jacobs doesn't get a couple extra million bucks or if I'm sitting there in Kansas City the and Chris Jones yeah. hasn't gotten the, Colts. the money he wants. The Colts with Taylor. Like, there's a team that thinks they're Super Bowl ready, and we all agree that they probably are oh, yeah. talent-wise, and they found a way to sign eight guys you know to a billion dollars for the contract. Do you understand why they can do that? Because they have a rookie quarterback. Like, they don't have a quarterback they're giving the big ticket money Facts. to. Yeah, like, and, and, and when you hear Kyle Shanahan talk about, man, that's a bonus. You want to know why it's a bonus? Because that's relieving pressure from yeah. his uh, second-year quarterback that they're hoping can be what he was last and year I, in those last eight and, games. And sorry to cut you off. Yeah, and no. you're, you're spot on great. And look how lucky they are. I yeah. mean, Rock Party was yeah. a seventh-round draft pick. You know what I mean? Like, they, they, I mean, they counted on Trey Lance to be that guy. He's gone. Yeah. 
Uh, Sam Darnold, they didn't know what he was going to be. Now they have Brock Purdy coming off an injury, led him to an NFC Championship game last year. They were like, man, we're good for right now. Let's just kind of load up and get the Calvary together. I want to give you just an example of what the guys are talking about. So this year, uh, Shadur Sanders, Deion's son, the starting quarterback at Colorado, will make three times as much money as Brock Purdy. Wild. That's real. Yeah. That's real. Don't Brock, Caleb Williams in it. Brock Purdy's going to make $750,000 as part of his rookie contract this year. Shadur Sanders is at $2.1 million wow. in NIL money right now. Mm-hmm. That's that's how little money. Right now. Brock Bright. He's going to make $5 million by the end of it. <laughs> but Brock Purdy is being paid, yeah. you know, like he's barely in the <laughs> And he's the starting quarterback of a team that legitimately can win a Super Bowl. Moving on to our third headline. We know Nick Bosa will be in uniform on Sunday. But will Joe Burrow? We got some insight on his status from himself. Here is what Joe Cool had to say about potentially playing. I mean, we're going to see how these next couple days play out because you never know with these things, but uh, I'm expecting to play. Uh, like I said, we'll see how these next couple days go. So we talked about it yesterday. Uh, talked about it the day before. I think he's on the field on Sunday. Wait You're still on the fence. Wow, he said changed. I'm ready to go. No, T.O. What do you mean? That changes everything. I hadn't seen that before the show started because they keep these things from me. Great job doing prep. <laughs> um, uh, let's play that again. You, oh, tell, you, you tell me if this is a guy that's 100% starting on Sunday. I say no, sir. Go hmm. ahead. Hmm. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I think. Yeah. I mean. What? Ready to go. We're going to. What? See how these next couple days play out because you never know with these things. But, he ain't playing. Uh, oh, he's playing. He's are you still on this? Uh, like I said, we'll see how these next he couple days play. He ain't playing? What are you doing? I'm telling you right now. That's what are you doing? Shit. They don't want Cleveland to know that he is not playing. I'm telling you right now. I'm Write it down. He um, said, I'm ready to go. No, he says, I think. Wait, he's ready to I go to the bathroom, ready, ready to go to, go to no, dinner. No. He's ready to go play football he, Sunday. He didn't come out and say, I'm playing on Sunday. Yeah, because he, he didn't say that? Because he doesn't want to tell he the go, opponent. He starts off because he's got a script from the from Zach Taylor. And he and listen, tell everybody you're playing. So, Joe Burrow, you ready to go? I'm ready to go. It wasn't period stop, I'm yeah. ready to go. It was, I'm ready to go. We'll see how the he caught himself. Himself. play out. He caught himself. He's not you're playing. making a great point. Thank you. But he caught himself. <laughs> he, he realizes, like, oh, wait point. a minute, this is not what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed yeah. to talk about injury. We're not supposed to talk about whether or not I'm going to be on the injury report or not. Whether I'm, whether I'm playing or not, yeah, it's not. not. He is going He's to play. Playing. Okay, you guys can be he is going together. To, he, 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 realized, <laughs> he realized once it came out of his mouth, I'm ready to go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can I you guys do me a solid? I rarely ask for anything on this show. Could you play it again? Oh, my but God. do me a favor. Look I at want, the body language. I do you want need you to, to see? Hang on. I want you to stop it right after he says, I'm ready to go. I want to compartmentalize the two I parts this. of this. I right, love how again, you are about But, this. Neil, uh, stop it after he says, I'm ready to go. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Okay, back. Ready to go. Look at the now, eyes. Can Lion I, eyes. <laughs> Lion <laughs> eyes. Lion. Now, if that's all it is, oh, Joe Burrow starting on Sunday. Yes. Yeah. Okay, now play the rest of it from that point on. God, you're and so you wrong And you tell me this. if Joe Burrow is starting on Sunday. Neil, go ahead and play it, please. Go ahead. I think, I mean, we're going to see how these next couple days play out because you never know with these things. But You uh, never know. I'm what? expecting to play. Uh, like I said, we'll see how these next couple days go. Okay, you never know. I'm expecting to play. play. What do we? And he goes, we'll see how the next couple of days go. What are we looking for? The qualifiers are there so that his, your opponent is preparing for one quarterback and another quarterback. It, it, it is what it is. This is the National Football League. The one thing you don't want to do is tip off your opponent of what you're going to step on the field Jake with. Because Jake Browning brings so yeah, much. Jake Browning. <laughs> you got to prepare for Jake Browning. Yeah, hand off, hand off, bad pass. You, so, so they bring different elements to the, game, to the table. So naturally, yes, you don't know what to expect from Jake Browning because we don't know what, what he elements is. does Jake Browning bring to the it, table? That's the, that's the point that By I'm making. Way, it, it, you well, don't know Jake questions. Browning is playing – the he offense is, will look different. Uh, yes. Forget about that. Yes. 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 If Jake yes, Browning is playing, here's what Cleveland's saying. We're blitzing on every down because he can't play NFL football. Can we pull up Can we pull up Joe Burrow's injury history? For a oh, I can just tell you. I don't have to pull it up. Well, I'm just telling you oh, I guess why he's are. not playing. Yeah. <laughs> ACL, MCL. You really think he's going to Cat, ruptured appendix. He hasn't got an extension yet. You think he's going to go week one against Miles Garrett in that defense? He's out. His body language is screaming, 
I'm ducking this one. See you in Baltimore. So wait, I want to get. By the way, straight. he's straight. never won a home. He's never beat the Browns in Cleveland. Cleveland. All three of you think that Joe Burrow will not start at quarterback. No, he, no, he, no, well, no, no, Greg, no, he's going to, he's play. going to play. No, Greg, we've heard he it from the offensive coordinator. Side. We heard it from the man himself. He's going to play. We didn't hear that. No, he didn't. He, by didn't way, say that he said, all. I'm ready to go. I expect to play. What else do you want him to say? I'm ready to eat a whole pie. I'm not going to do it right now. You might, good, though. You, you could. Might. If you, you might. had one, you would. You might. Yeah. yeah. Apple, so <laughs> all mode. Yeah. yeah. You might. Moving on. That was a tough on. one. Oh, Sorry. you want to stay here? We can't move explain on. To me, explain to me why he's because not Because here's the deal. When you ask a, a franchise quarterback, are you starting in this game? If they have decided that he's starting, it's simple. I'm starting. We're ready to rock and roll. I'm going. That's what he said. If he's not starting, it is, I'm ready to go. But, but let's just see what the next 48 hours bring. Recovery. Break. They're done practicing for Sunday. It's walkthroughs at this point. They're not out there. So He's you know what, not playing. You know what I love about this program is uh, they have these little machines on your collar right now. They record your voice. Yeah, record and, it. And the cameras re- record the picture of you saying this, mm-hmm. and we can revisit this on Monday. We're going to. That's one thing I love. Matter of fact, I wish we had a board we could put predictions up on. <laughs> so Imagine that. We, that. Could, we could remember. Imagine that. The, and just to are. correct one thing, yeah. today is Thursday. It yeah. is a full goal day to day. I not thought today was Friday. No, it felt like Friday. It's like it's not a walk. I actually thought it was Tuesday 20 minutes ago. Don't go for that practice. The air conditioning is not working. It felt like a Friday, man. I'm sweating right now. Is it 2023? I don't know what year it is. But I'll tell you what right now. Sean Watson doesn't know. What's the uh, the line in this game? Is that... Two and a half. Two and a half. Just walk... You're talking about... The heir apparent to uh, the Kansas City Chiefs dominance, the Cincinnati Bengals, a team that's been to a Super Bowl, been to multiple AFC yep. Championship games against one of the worst franchises in NFL history. And you're telling me that they're only favored by two and a half and Joe Burrow's playing? Learn how to read. He's not playing. <laughs> Period. Stop. I have to make a confession. I listened to you guys yesterday say that Joe Burrow wasn't well, you were here. play. And I bet on the Browns. And now I feel like an idiot. <laughs> I, I did that. I'm going to cash yeah. out that bet, and I'm going to bet on the Bengals because Joe Burrow no, is going to Joe play. I promise you. Hold on. We're moving on to our final headline. <laughs> I was against this in the meeting. I did not want to do this headline because it involves not only Major League Baseball, but the irrelevant New York Yankees. Let's go, Yankees! For some reason, they are going to make me say that the Yankees won a couple games. They're yeah. irrelevant. They're not going to make the playoffs. It does not matter. So the why title. is this a headline, Willie? Really? We're back. Because, You're not back. Because of Dominguez, the marshal. He's been back absolutely last place. lights out. Now, they have to win the next 18 out of their 21 to kind of. Why not 19 out of 21? Yeah. If you look at it this way, they've made up five games in the loss column in the last two weeks. They're only six <laughs> games out. Yes. Yes. There's only three teams They're, ahead of them. Thank and you. And schedule is easy peasy. Only it's three it's teams working. We got Rendon on the yeah. mound tonight. Stanton hit his 400th home run Tuesday. The mojo's moving in our favor. Here come the Yankees, baby. Oh, the Yankees got to win. The Yankees got to win. First of all, you found the Yankees out a month ago. The Yankees are done. Done. We got to win 18-21. Wait, it starts with one day at a time. That's it. We just got to worry about tonight. Beat the Detroit Tigers. Get the sweep. There's only three teams in front of you in the world. It ain't happening. Well, there's three. No, it wasn't happening. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's over. Uh, All right. I think we got to take a break. I'm pretty sure of it, right? (laughs) (laughs) It feels like we should take a break. Yes. So I think we're going to take a break. Do whatever you feel. Uh, Listen, Jets, Bills, Monday night. Uh, The Jets have announced that Brees Hall is their starting running back. But, of course, all eyes are going to be on the quarterback position. Is there an edge for Josh Allen? Or is there an edge for my guy, Aaron Rodgers? Mm-hmm. We'll get into that right after this on FS1. Thank you for joining us here on the Carton Show. Of course, Monday night. Uh, hard to wait to Monday, but we're going to have to, to see the New York Jets with Aaron Rodgers going up against the Bills divisional rival and Josh Allen. And this is actually a pretty fair question, and that is... Josh Allen versus Aaron Rodgers, right? Josh Allen first off talked about how much he grew up idolizing the great Aaron Rodgers. So play that first. Go ahead. All right, no words. You know, we're, I'm sure we'll talk before game. Um, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm such a big fan of his game and have been been for a very long time. I grew up watching him and wanting to be like him on the football field. So it's still a surreal feeling to, to be playing against someone like them, but, but also having a relationship with him. And, um, you know, it's crazy. 
I find it interesting when guys openly admit their reverence for a player, especially when they're going head-to-head. For me, that's an advantage for the New York Jets because Josh Allen's a kid at heart, right? Josh Allen, still a young guy, not 30 years old yet, hasn't won a Super Bowl yet, and he looks across the field and goes, oh, my God. That's Aaron Rodgers. I'm playing against Aaron Rodgers. Monday Night Football, 80,000 screaming lunatics, and he's going to look across the field and go, oh, my God, that's my idol. That plays in the Jets' favor. I can imagine my idol growing up was Lawrence Taylor, and I yeah. can imagine locking horns to Lawrence Taylor. I probably would pee my pants like Jacoby's used to, but I, I would yeah. just I overall. It happened once. Yeah, it happened once. It's a thing. But I, I, would say, I would say this. I think Josh has to understand that Aaron Rodgers doesn't care about his feelings. Right. You know, like, you got to get over that. You got to get over that fast. And I think Aaron Rodgers also everywhere that this kid can get turnover prone in the red zone. So, I think the edge is to Aaron Rodgers, and I think he's going to be a hell of a day for the Jets so, on Monday night. Greg, answer this question for me. If you're Aaron Rodgers, is there a part of you that takes that as disrespect? I grew up watching you. Is, is there a part of you that if you're Aaron Rodgers being like, I'm still here, and I'm a better quarterback than you, forget how you grew up watching. You're calling him old. No, I don't, I don't think he takes that dis takes it as disrespect. Obviously, I mean, when you've played how, as long as Aaron Rodgers, you're going to get a lot of that. However, I'm not at all with you guys. Yeah, of course you're not. I mean, you're talking about this. This is very divided. To the yeah, advantage advantage Aaron Aaron very divided. Like, is it the Zach, Wilson, <laughs> Zach Wilson, your second string quarterback, did the very same thing last year going into Lambeau. And what did they do? They still beat Zach Wilson didn't beat the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, Look, that, the Jets that, beat the Green Bay Packers. That, that and the Packers are in the middle Josh of the Josh Allen is yeah. the better quarterback at this stage in their careers. Oh, stop. He's the most valuable player on on each team. When you look at if you remove Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills is yeah. irrelevant. And if you remove Aaron Rodgers, they their defense still can make plays for him and still get him potentially into a into a Same playoff. Defenses fight. last year went seven and ten. Right. Yeah, but you have another you have a quarterback that feels like you know what I can do a little bit Look, more to be fair, because of Aaron Rodgers. You take Josh Allen off the Bills, they're not in the playoffs. Take Aaron Rodgers off the Jets, they're not in the playoffs. Take Joe Burrow off the Bengals, they're not in the playoffs. So that that exists in every team that has a legitimate franchise quarterback. Listen, when you you look across the field where in those moments where you do and you recognize or on the field, I suppose, wow, that's Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. You take that on the field with you and maybe you try a little harder. Maybe you try to squeeze the ball in that you shouldn't squeeze in. Advantage Jets. <laughs> Man, look, when I, went, when, when I played and I looked across the field and I saw uh, Steve Bartkowski. <laughs> Steve Bart. Stop it. <laughs> no, I I'm not 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 but you also feel like I need to show the world that I'm better than him. Was there a wide receiver where you were like in awe of a little bit when you were a rookie coming in that you shared a field with where obviously you don't play against one another when you were like, oh, my God, that's Jerry Rice. Torrey Holt. Torrey Holt. Oh, that was the guy. Oh. Huge Torrey Holt guy, man, just because of the attention to detail, uh, the way he went about his work, hands, all the things. I love Torrey Holt. The, obviously, the – the greatest show on turf and what they were able to do, he and Isaac Bruce, yep. I wanted to be that. And seeing him, it was like, man, he's like that. And then I get to go out there and try to emulate what I've always wanted to. Yeah. It's an honor, but I'm not like, oh, my gosh. No. But you can admit, you get starstruck. Yeah, I mean, like, it's natural. To. I remember when I, we played the Niners and I saw Big Larry Allen. And now it was like seeing, like, I was like, oh, man, that's that's the Larry Allen. And he was as advertised. Right. Big, burly, had a big old dip in his mouth. And I remember him looking at <laughs> he, he was unstrapped, and he was like, hey, young fella. And I was like, hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, but those moments, and to Allen's point, like, you, you, it's a moment in time you get to say, like, man, I went against Aaron Rodgers. 
and I gave him that work on Monday night. I mean, you're a big basketball head. You talk about basketball players doing it all the time. Football players the same way. When you go against guys you emulate, love to emulate and idolize, there's that moment, like Grace saying, I want to put the knife in him. At the same time, I want to love him. I want yeah. to love him Let while I'm doing Let me ask you this, though, Willie. Like, you mentioned basketball. If you're playing against LeBron, let's say you wear LeBron's every other game, but you don't wear them in that game. So should Allen, in, in advance of this game, be praising Aaron Rodgers in this way? Does he lose a little bit of a competitive edge? Um, I, I, don't so. I don't think so. I think Thank he's you. just saying, man, I'm paying homage to the GOAT. He's one of the GOATs. But at the same time, I'm trying to put the knife in him. Right. I'm trying Look, to. Because the reality is that done. there aren't. How many first ballot Hall of Famers are playing quarterback right now in the league today? Guaranteed, locked hey, in, Baker first Mayfield. ballot. Right. There's only a couple at most, right? Mm -hmm. So I think you could flip the script of that based on your question. And if I'm Josh Allen, Monday Night Football, major game, divisional game, everybody watching, everybody's in love. Aaron Rodgers changing the culture. Of the New York Jets, they're a Super Bowl contender. Man, if I could go out there and throw for 350, not, not against Aaron Rodgers, against the New York Jets defense and outplay Aaron Rodgers, I'm the toast of the town. And I think it can motivate you as well. Yeah, it, look, this if you ask any quarterback in the National Football League if they're playing up against Aaron Rodgers, you can ask Patrick Mahomes, right. and he would pay homage to Aaron Rodgers. Good but point. you think it's going to give Aaron Rodgers a distinct advantage? Do you think Patrick Mahomes isn't going to go out there and still be Patrick Mahomes? No, that's not how competitors operate. Yes, I, I honor what you've done and what you've allowed me to even, you know, follow suit and yeah. be able to do. But I'm, I'm I'm that guy now. What was it like for you the first time you stepped on the field with Jim McMahon? I knew you. I, knew you got it. <laughs> I, I can <laughs> see <laughs> it brewing. I can see it. Why are you laughing? <laughs> We're the same drop. I line. know. <laughs> but he just, he just reached in the crate to pull out <laughs> Jim McMahon. It's Doesn't everybody want to know what that was like? <laughs> no. Were you tuned in by the headband? I, to be fair, though, was Jim Plunkett good to you? <laughs> He's aging you by the second. It's brutal. Jim Plunkett. I, I've heard rumors that you did not get along with Roger Spellman. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great. Go to the jar. Chris. We need the jar. Please. please. Go to the jar. It's the best thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Get them off me, Chico. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's Thursday. It is time. It is time for everyone's favorite segment. Everyone. It's the a jar. little something that we like to call the jar. The jar. Discovered at the base of a Mayan temple years ago, we have obtained a jar. A jar that has the supernatural power to make proclamations. We are now at the mercy of the jar. All right, let's get right into it. The jar is now officially open for business, and we go in. What do we have here? All right, number one, the best quarterback in the building for this weekend's Eagles Patriots game will be Tom Brady. <laughs> Impossible to argue. With. Yeah, what is the best of all time? The jar's right on. Yeah. Congratulations, Jar. You're yeah, off to a hot like, start. If Tom Brady decided, you know what? I'm done with retirement. And he put on the pads. He's the best quarterback on the field between Macaroni Jones uh, and Jalen Hurts. True or false? Uh, I think it's Jalen Hurts. Nah, oh, stop come it. on, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Listen, Willie. I know Tom's going to be in the building. He's, it's he's, Tom Brady Day. Yeah. It's Tom Brady. They're going to be throwing flowers at his feet. But Jalen Hurts, I think I, I think he's going to be amazing this year. So it's obviously Jalen Hurts. All right. And he, uh, yeah, well, uh, I mean, it's Tom Brady. It's Tom. That's why, that's why <laughs> again, yesterday you said yeah. something that just I thought about. All night last night. Yes. You think that the Patriots are going to beat the Eagles in this game? I do. You, in, on, on the scoreboard? I do. Yeah. So you think they'll yeah. end up with more points Thus than the beating. Eagles? Yes. That's how you beat I the want to be clear about this yeah, yeah. Yeah. because I said you it. could not be more wrong. Okay. Like, this is wild. That's why they play the game. They're not losing on Tom Brady Day. How not do you lose on mentor. Tom Brady Day? Not losing. Huh? We'll find out on Sunday. It's like losing on You Christmas. think Belichick's going to let that happen? Yes. With Tom uh, Brady in yes. the building? Here we go. Uh, if you were picking a quarterback to save the world and you had three choices, which of these three would you pick? Jamarcus Russell, oh, Johnny Manziel, or Tim Tebow? That's tough. <laughs> I'm going Tim Tebow. He knows how to pray. <laughs> <laughs> That's um. <laughs> Uh, that's tough. <laughs> I'm going. I might go Jamarcus Russell. I'm going Menzel. 
<laughs> the guy lives for the moment. <laughs> That's what I know about him. He's an all or nothing type guy. So I'm on Menzel. Yeah. Look at all first round draft picks. <laughs> what are they saving the world from? <laughs> now, to be fair, Tim Tebow did win on one pass. He did. In yes. a playoff game against the Pittsburgh he Steelers. Did. Yes, yes. He, yes, he, he did. did. He yeah, did. Yeah. I, know. Oh, I definitely yeah. Yeah. I I mean, forgot that. Any insight on that, William? Any Tell insight? Us, just real quick. Tim Tebow beats you guys with that one pass uh, in the seam touchdown. Go home. What was that locker room like? Uh, oh, very drunk afterwards. <laughs> we, were, <laughs> we were depressed, man. We we didn't like we thought we had it. We went into overtime. Yep. And it was one strike to your point. Ike. I I go. Ike, you know I love you. It wasn't Ike's fault though. It was another I, person's fault that happened. Whose fault is I it? can't do it to him. You can't. I can't, I can't, I can't do can't. it to him. Dude, we're not it, moving on. It was a dick. <laughs> we're not moving on. Who messed up the coverage? I can't, man. He's my what, dog. What they, huh? What's their name rhyme with? Alamalo? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know. It wasn't Troy. It wasn't Troy. But it was, it was tough to swallow, man, because at the end no, of that. No, 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 no. Why can't we move on? Who messed up the coverage? You can say, just say it once. We'll, let it, we'll pretend it never yeah. happened. Just whisper um, it. Go ahead. Whisper it. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. Oh, yeah. wow. I can't do That's it. That's disappointing. Wow. I, I, I mean, Antonio Cromartie threw Kyle Wilson under the bus last week <laughs> for messing <laughs> yes. up the coverage on the Victor Cruz. Did that happen? 99-yard touchdown. Who messed up the coverage? Tell us right now. Go ahead. Tim Tebow. This is when he was a Jet, by the way. Yes, I know. Yeah, that's, 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 that's my extreme. That, and by the way, this is after he threw three, three or four picks in a practice. That, that, <laughs> Who that, messed up the coverage? What do you mean? I'm not, I can't do it to him. All I right. can't do it Is to it him. You are, you are, write it down. I'll say it. Okay. Uh, here we go. Next one. <laughs> Next one. Out of the jar. All right. This will be the eighth year a wild card team wins the Super Bowl. The last time it happened, the 2020 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I can see that, by the way. I'm down with that. Mm, yeah. I think there's a parity in the league. I, I was just going to say that yeah, there's yeah. a lot of parity. I mean, especially in the AFC, you can see any one of those teams making a run. NFC as well. Like, if somebody gets in, I think the difference is, high. I think San Fran and Philly, to be fair, are going to be dominant teams. I think there's six of those teams in the AFC. So, therefore, one or two of those teams has to get in as a wild card. If you game, and it'll be as good as any division win. If you game it out, someone who comes in second in their division, like yeah. the Cowboys, for example, or the Eagles, and you look at the AFC, like the North, the, the second best team in the North, second best team in the East, I could see that happening because there are certain divisions that are so strong that a great team will come in second. Yeah, obviously, the benefit of winning is uh, you get to buy. Well, one team gets to buy, not mm -hmm. all of them. And uh, everything stays at home. You know, wild card team has to be really good on the road, and then we get into all the bad weather stuff. But yeah. I listen. I think the days of wild card teams having a tough time winning a Super Bowl, it's happened seven times in the 58 years of the NFL, is no longer a big deal. I think anybody can do it. You guys did it. Yeah, we were one of those. There you go. Yeah. All thank right. you. You got something you want to say there? <laughs> thank you. What was his name? Come on. Thank I you. can't do it to him, man. You're not gonna do it. I Come can't on. Do it to him. I'm sorry. Was he a household name? No. He was not. No. Okay. There you I'm go. All right. Next one. <laughs> Somebody said check the right. Derek Carr. Is this the last one? It's the last one on the jar. Here we go. Derek Carr is the most valuable NFC starting quarterback. Uh, I, I think so. Uh, it, His listen. backup is James Winston still, right? Yeah. Okay. Winston, yeah. But, but I also, I think this guy is, like I, we talked about his stats. I think you get rid of his interceptions of what he's done in the last two years. The fact that he's into a building where they're going to, Derek Allen and that whole staff, they're going to support him. I think he's going to be ready to go. I like Alvin Kamara. Talk about Chris Olave. Talk about Michael Thomas. I think he's going to be the most valuable quarterback. Uh -oh. in the what's, hap what's happening I don't here? know. Greg's looking at me. What happened? What are, what are you doing? What do you want me to do? <laughs> you he asked me the question. You have on green. Yeah. So, you just showed Jalen Hurts. Like, yeah, Jalen Hurts. But I have no loyalty to Jalen Hurts. Clearly you don't. I didn't say that he's going to be the best quarterback in that building against the Patriots. Now We're talking about the all of the NFC seat. Marcus Mariota is his backup. It, it, <laughs> he's the most valuable <laughs> NFC starting quarterback. You could make the argument it's Derek Carr because with Derek yeah. Carr, the Saints should win the division without a problem. Right, it's not a very good division. Derek Carr is the quarterback. You win the division, you're playing at home first round of the playoffs unless you get the bye, right? That's why I'm not making a Derek Carr because of their division. Like, anything can happen. Like, you can play with any – Jameis Winston can be under center and it's like, okay, uh, we, we tried got that. They yeah, tried that. That's, the reason he's, yeah, that's why he's number two. Anyhow, that'll be a cap run this week's job. Oh, and I'll give you one more shot. Who is the guy in the I Steelers? I can't do it to him. Say his name. Coverage. He's not watching. I, I, oh, he is watching. Ike Taylor, yeah, we're, 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 watching. Ike Taylor, we're <laughs> going with you. It wasn't Ike. It wasn't Ike's fault. McFadden? McFadden? No, B-Mac was gone. Uh-huh. Yeah, B-Mac uh -huh. was in there. Uh -huh. yeah. And he was not 
a household name. We'll go through the roster. Oh, okay. We won't bring this up again. Don't worry about it. We'll, this won't come up later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Listen, Not that kind up, of show. We got first in football. Uh, can the Dolphins trust Tua uh, to get through an entire season? And what did Giants defensive coordinator Wink Martindale say about Kayvon Thibodeau? Find out right after this on FS1. The heir apparent to the Heisman and maybe a back-to-back -back winner, Caleb Williams, the rock star quarterback for USC and the easy number one overall pick whenever he decides to come out of college, has a father who likes to talk about his son. I get that. Uh, and he said, look, if the NFL situation ain't good, we just come back and play more college football. And, of course, with NILs now, the young man's going to make five-plus million bucks a year as long as he stays in college. Right now he's making just under three million bucks. But as his star continues to shine week after week, more money comes in. And that's the luxury now great players have. If you think, oh, I don't want to be drafted by the Arizona Cardinals. I just stay in school another year until the eligibility runs out. So that's on the table right now. Yeah, but you hate to see it. a family member speaking out. And all that yes. we're going to do is focus on Caleb Williams. Oh, is this how you feel? And right. it, this may not even be how Caleb actually feels, but because a family member, dad says it, you know the relationship has to be somewhat there. If not all the way there, there there's some type of conversation. It's, it's unfortunate because Joe Burrow, everyone was alluding to him when he was on his way out and the Bengals were going to pick select him. It was like, no, you can't go to, can't go to Cincinnati. Right. He leaned into it and was like, no, I want to be the reason why we can change because he had confidence in himself. I believe Caleb Williams is that type of guy. So I think he comes out regardless of the situation. Maybe. I mean, listen, if the Rams are the first pick, that sounds more appetizing. We've been there than the situation in Arizona. But my philosophy is always, I look, Family members always want to react to stuff said about their kid, a uh, uh, spouse, whatever it might be. But it's always best to keep your lip tight. It is. Nothing good ever comes out of a family member talking. And I respect that Mr. Williams is very proud of his son and wants to speak on his son's behalf. You're not doing him any favors by putting anything out there. Even if you think it's innocuous, it never goes well. So the guy's a rock star. I wouldn't want to play for Arizona either. No I'd rather play for the Rams and stay in California, but that's seven months away at best. And now we have first and football. First and football, first down. We start with the, Jet, the Giants and the Cowboys. It is Sunday night, and that man, Michael Parsons, will be playing for the Cowboys. But there's an edge rusher for the Giants as well. Yeah. And Thibodeau and defensive coordinator Wink Martindale compared Parsons and Thibodeau. Wow. And here's what he had to say. All right. I guess unfair. I mean, I, I think they're both, they both have a lot of things they do really well. Some different things that some do better than others and vice versa. But uh, I, I like Kayvon, just, you know, who he is and what he does for this defense. He brings so much flexibility to the defense that people don't really understand that he does everything. It's a very nice way of saying Kayvon's not there yet. He's not. Yeah. No. <laughs> Listen, here's the deal with Kayvon Thibodeau. Um, he's his own best cheerleader, number one. He's got a motor that doesn't quit. You give him that for sure. We've seen glimpses of his ability to take over games and make big plays. We've not yet seen it consistently. Now, to be fair, he's in his second year. Right, so there's a, there's, a, there's a process of getting to a level where you're an every down defensive player who can wreak havoc on every down. He is not Micah Parsons. No, he is not no. Micah Parsons. No. Wink no, Martindale understands close. that. Yeah. Like, that's why he says it's unfair. Because there's, you, you're talking about a guy, we talked about him earlier, who can, you can literally line him up almost anywhere on the defense. Yep. Safety, corner, uh, linebacker, defensive end, defensive tackle. You can line him up anywhere when we're talking about Micah Parsons. You can't do that with, with Kayvon Thibodeau. And, and not just him. A lot of guys in this league can't do that. So it's unfair. I'm with him. It's unfair to compare that guy. He, naturally, he's going to say, but I like right. Kayvon. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, so you, yeah. sh you should never compare anyone to the best player in the league unless they've got the resume to back it up. Thibodeau is a good player. He has the chance to be great. But you're talking about the best defensive player, you know, an octopus on defense that nobody is comparable to at all. Yeah, you talked about, we talked about earlier about Chris Jones demanding double team. So does Michael Parsons. K-Ron Thibodeau, there's some guys who feel like they can knuckle up one-on-one -on -one with him, right? And that's the end of the day. When you get to the level, when you demand double teams, where you're the guy circled in a, in a scouting report, where you're the guy like, hey, man, we just gonna, may have to eat one because this guy's unstoppable. When you become that guy like yeah. Michael Parsons is, then you can start the comparison. Like, he had some good levels. moments in the playoff game against he the Minnesota Vikings. 
Antoine. But he has not been consistent where I'm game planning every down for where's Thibodeau at? He's not there yet. I like the way Martindale handled that. He was like, Unfair, no chance. However, I'm going to say some nice things about Thibodeau. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He needs Thibodeau to have, you know, seven or eight sacks this year. Now we move on to second and football. Eagles, Patriots in Foxborough honoring Tom Brady, starting Mac Jones. Here's what Mac Jones said about his relationship with the GOAT. <clears throat> He's a great guy. He's actually helped me a lot already and um, just talking to him or whatever. And he's been a great mentor and stuff. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's a great player. I love watching his film. He pops up on, on game tape, obviously, from last year and everything, too. So he's always on the film doing the right thing. So just trying to, um, you know, learn from him, and, and he's, he's been awesome. Well, I'm not sure how Tom Brady pops up on Patriots game tape from last year. <laughs> other Bill Belichick sneaking a, a video and be like, Tom. <laughs> be yeah, like, like Tom. do that. <laughs> you're not Tom Brady. <laughs> that kind of thing. But I don't think you're honoring Tom Brady by making him watch Macaroni Jones play quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you might want to wait a couple of years till you get a good quarterback. And like, if I'm Tom Brady, I'm like. You made me come watch this? Yeah. This is insulting to my legend as the Patriots quarterback. Look, Mac Jones seems like a good guy. He does. Um, he's not a great quarterback. He regressed last year. I think we all give him a pass because who his coordinators sure. were. And Joe Judge and Matt Patricia, you know, this is a big year. You know, they spent the entire offseason telling you he is not guaranteed to be our starting quarterback. Then they cut all the other quarterbacks, right? They bring a journeyman young guy in to be his backup week one. And it's like, look, I'm Bill Belichick. I'm smarter than everybody else. But when it comes to this position, post-Brady, he just hasn't been. Also, listen, I think the New New England Patriots won't. They won't put him in a position like they did Brady. Like Brady controlled everything, was ahead of the curve, set the offense up. They're going to very, they make it very basic for him because that's all they have at the end of the day. You talk about Zeke and Ramondi Stevenson, it's going to be a heavy dose of that, and the defense will lead the way. So, uh, Mac, he knows what it is. Praise Brady on his day. Yeah. Stay out the way. Yeah, and look, you know, I think for Mac Jones, the idea is don't be the guy that costs us a game. Yes. Like, the Eagles have a badass defense. It's not pretending mm-hmm. like they don't. Their defensive line is special, right? So you have to deal with that for sure, and that means turnovers. And I think, you know, we have both said that New England can and will beat the Eagles in week one, and I recognize it's not going to be a popular pick, and the Eagles are a better team. No one's going to argue that. Mm-hmm. But it comes down to the belief, will Matt Jones early this year be smart? Meaning, don't throw into double coverage. Take the check downs. Hand the ball off 35 times and give your team a chance to win. Because New England, I will say this, if they're in a close game late, then I do give an edge to Bill Belichick being a great fourth quarter coach. I think he and Brian Dable right now are probably, and maybe even um, in Minnesota. Um, no, 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 um, no. Yeah, uh, very good fourth quarter coach last year as well. I think there is an advantage coaching-wise when you're in a very close one-score game and you have the experience of Belichick on the sideline. If it comes down to talent, the Patriots aren't in the same class as the mm-hmm. Eagles. I think week one is a feeling-out period, and I do give New England a chance to win. Moving on to third and football. It is third down. When you discuss the Miami Dolphins, it's Tick legs. if Tua is healthy. I'm just that's saying, you stop always the video. Say. That, that's not quarterback legs. I'm you, saying, you know his body wait, system. Wait, 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 wait. Greg, legs right he, there. he will go in front of cameras and say he will fight you if you make fun of his, his body. He's done it before. I respect that. I like that. I'm tonguing as well. I don't want a scrappy bunch. I get that. But those legs are not the legs of a great quarterback. Stop those it. are the legs oh of a great fullback. Yes. Stop it. Moose did, Johnson has those legs. We showed Aaron Rodgers on here. The first thing you said when you saw him in that jet. Yeah. Heavy legs. Heavy legs. Heavy legs. legs. That's what you said. Heavy legs. That's what you he said. Is. Wow. And I can tell you, when, when I was out with Frank Reich one night, I've told you guys this story. Yes, we were yes. stranded during a typhoon out in uh, Fire Island, uh, just off the coast of Long Island here typhoon. in New York. And I said, tell me what you look for when you're handicapping a young quarterback. And I figure it's going to be like arm strength and arm this. He goes, Craig, I want a big, thick ass. <laughs> and I want big, thick legs. And I want, I was like, this is my only fans account he read. <laughs> and he goes, I want a big, thick core. And that's what they look for now in quarterbacks. But, man, he's got thick legs. He does. Well, head coach Mike McDaniel of the Dolphins <laughs> is looking for Tua to play the entire season. And he spoke about that yesterday. Oh, let's hear that. I'm very confident because he is, um, hasn't wasted a day 
um, in getting ready for this season. That was a huge goal of his. He, he understands what he means to this football team. And uh, I can tell you honestly that he does not take that for granted at all, um, how, uh, how much support um, he has uh, to do what he does. Uh, he's definitely given it back this offseason. I really don't know anything. Oh, sorry. How does that guy command the locker room? And I like Mike McDaniels because he's a quirky son of a bitch. That's the most boringest that I've ever heard yeah. him sound. He usually has quips and things where he's funny. That, yeah. was, that was a sleeper. Look, <laughs> you know, here's the problem with Tua. He, even through college, he's not a guy that stays healthy. And I'm not saying he's brittle. You know, concussions are a different type of injury, yeah. obviously. But he has not ever in his lifetime gone through an entire year of football without some type of injury, whether it's a shoulder, whether, unfortunately, it's multiple concussions. So it's a great wish to have. But I think you go into this season recognizing there's going to be a handful of games, not his fault maybe, that we're going to have to win without two as our quarterback, meaning Mike F. and White, right, Skyler Thompson. Uh, and if those guys play, you're not going to win. So I think every week you go out there, and again, this is not unique to Miami. Mm -hmm. I can say this about 20 teams in the NFL. It's like, whoo. We got through that week. Two is still healthy. Now we get another week with him. But there is going to come a point where he doesn't play because that's what's happened his entire football career. And on top of that, you don't know when he's going to get hurt and how it's going to transpire. All you got to do, is, all you got to do, is make sure that offense and that defense are on par to win you games. And if you do land late in the season where you do have to play meaningful games, that the team is, is prepared to play without Tua. I think he's done everything in the offseason to be ready to play all 17 games. Sure, it's he's just not a match. Who knows? I so. mean, he hasn't played more than 13 games in his NFL career. He's yeah. never done it. But when you look at the question and it says, what's the ceiling if two is healthy? Well, this is a team that believes that they can get to the Super Bowl. Like, and I, I'm, mm. I'm right there with them. If, but the if is so big and it looms large sure. because his inability to stay healthy, to your point. Look, no one, it's funny. When you talk about the Dolphins, nobody questions the offense ability, right? They're a, a, they're a quick score offense because you have Wall on one side and Tyree Kill on the other side, right? Their running back situation isn't great. Raheem Mostert's going to be their starting running back. Uh, it's, they obviously talked about upgrading that position, whether it's Jonathan Taylor, whether it was Dalvin Cook. It never materialized. Defensively, they take a big hit. Ramsey gets hurt, obviously. He's going to miss the first half of the season. So they can all, they're susceptible to give up the big play as much as they're good at creating the big play on offense. I just don't think of them, and I don't think this is my Jet fandom. When I look at the Dolphins, I don't think of them as a Super Bowl championship team. Part of that's Tua, for sure, and all on that. But they do not have a dominant defense. They do not have a great running attack. And they've got a quarterback who can't stay healthy. How could I possibly pick them to make a run to a Super Bowl? I can't stop laughing because you're a Jets fan. And you're like, I can't yeah. think of the Dolphins being a Super Bowl I champion. Can't. Like, I, I honestly think the, the Dolphins and the Bills are fighting for second place. And that's how I view it. Now, if you told me that something weird happens in the AFC North, which I don't expect, and the AFC East gets a third team in, they both can't get three teams in, uh, great. But uh, I think the Miami Dolphins are looking at, you know, 10 wins, 11 wins. And I think that'd be a good year for them. But they are not a Super Bowl contender. They're just not. And you guys can yell and scream at me. I respect Dolphin fans because you guys have stunk for a long time, too. <laughs> so we're like, I was about to say, yes, I you're get a Jet fan. Like, no, I get it. Like, <laughs> we are living parallel lives, Jet fans and Dolphin fans. When's the last time the, New the Miami Dolphins, you know, won a playoff game? Well, I'll wait. But they do beat the Patriots from time to time, which you they can't get say them. about the Jets. You can't they say that about the Jets. Yeah. 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 All right, listen, we got headlines coming your way. And we have football back. It all goes down tonight. Finally, it's here. We got the line. We got the Kansas City Chiefs, but do we have Chris Jones and Travis Kelsey? Answer after this. Good morning. Welcome back to the Cardinals Show. We have your headlines. The only thing that we care about is there is National Football League contest this evening between the Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs, and Jerry Goff's Detroit Lions. There will probably not be Chris Jones. There That's will right. probably not be Travis Kelsey. Tra Kelsey ain't which right. means it might be a competitive <laughs> game. Uh, it's going to be a competitive game anyway. Right, can I just make a request? Can I make like a request that? from the guys upstairs? Please. If oh, you guys no. fulfill this request, I'll be so thrilled I'll buy you breakfast tomorrow. Can I get my music, please? Oh! oh. Can I get my... Oh. Oh. 
Yes! <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. So all you former players watching our show right now. Yeah. Stop that time. Yeah. So look, I think it's a competitive game no matter what. You know, the Detroit Lions are a good football team, right? I think taking Chris Jones out makes that Detroit Lions offense that more potent. And not having Travis Kelsey now means the guy that already does everything for Kansas City has to do everything and a little more. But you've said something throughout the last couple of weeks, Greg, that I think we should focus on, and that is the ability, kind of like Tom Brady, of uh, Patrick Mahomes, to make no-name guys to us rock stars, right? Yeah. So whether it's a Sky Moore, who had a good Super Bowl but a bad regular season, mm -hmm. whether it's Kadarius Toney, who has never stayed healthy, but when he is, man, that's a tough dude to tackle in open space, whether it's whoever the tight end is now going to be. Noah Gray. Noah Gray. Right, Noah Gray. Someone else now has to make a play. The Kansas City can no longer just show up and beat everybody by 30. And they used to, right? Especially all oh, the Lions think bad franchise. So what I'm trying to figure out, which of the no-name guys, Rasheed Rice, I don't know who it's going to be, mm -hmm. is going to be the guy that in the fourth quarter, Mahomes under duress, tries to find a guy downfield to make a play the way Kelsey would. Who's that guy going to be? Yeah, if, if you're any of those guys, you're looking at your chops. But I'm looking at Sky Moore, and I'm looking at Kadarius Toney. And why the reason that is is because these are two guys that play in the slot. And when we look at what they will be missing if Travis Kelsey is not available to play tonight, it's that guy that brings that presence in the slot. That's where he makes his money. If you look at these plays, you look at a guy like Kadarius Toney, how can we get an advantage? You put him outside or flank him away from Sky Moore, you got two interchangeable guys what Travis Kelsey does better than anyone in the business is work the middle of the field mm -hmm. you have two guys who are capable of doing that Noah Gray as well and maybe even Rasheed Rice we saw last year a guy in Juju Smith Schuster was able to do those sure. types of things so if you can do this if you're Patrick Mahomes, you can get still away. get away with the win against the Detroit Lions that, in my opinion, I believe they've been. Yeah, and I also think, win. really, that you know this is the year where Isaiah Pacheco proves he's the real deal. Yes, sir. Right, seventh-round pick out of Rutgers. No one thought much of him. Obviously played key moments for them down the stretch last year into the Super Bowl. But again, seventh-round pick. Mm -hmm. He's not making any money. They're going to have to rely on a guy like that to make plays. Third and four, are we going to hand the ball off? Is he that good? Can we rely on him in a big spot? Uh, and at some point, I think we all get a little lazy when it comes to Kansas City over the last four or five years because Mahomes has been just that good. Like, you guys can put up now if you want. In season openers, in the history of football, there ain't nobody better. Money. Never lost a season opener. 73% completion percentage. Is this real? 300-plus <laughs> yards per game. And then the key one to me, he has thrown 18 touchdowns in his five season Did openers. Can we fact check this? And it's real. Never, oh, it's real. Never thrown an interception. And, oh, by the way, they average 38 <laughs> points a game. It's, it like, doesn't seem real. You know, I look at that and I say to myself, the part, are part win. of my brain, <laughs> the left side of my brain, the dumb part of my brain says, why is Detroit showing up? <laughs> the right side of my brain says, because maybe this is the year where they're so showing some chinks in the armor. Kelsey, maybe not playing, probably not playing tonight. Chris Jones, almost certainly not playing tonight. And we always say, when you're talking about great teams, who have the pedigree of knowing how and when to win big games, when's the best time to play them? Early, not late. And maybe there's enough blood in the water for Detroit to capitalize on that. Well, there's two things we haven't talked about. The brain of Andy Reid, right? The there fact that he has had time to prepare for this team. He knows what this team looks like. He knows what his team looks like. And on top of that, this big, great offense line of Kansas City Chiefs are beef eaters. They get down and dirty, and I have a lot of respect for them. So you talk about Pacheco, that's the reason he's going to have an impact in tonight's game because of the offense line Andy Reid is prepared for. And I think there's a chance. Again, Kelsey's the household name, right? The other guys aren't. Now, I guess if you're in New York, you know who Kadarius Tony is because he was a giant for a short amount of time and a first-round draft pick. But one of these guys, maybe two of these guys, have an opportunity tonight to make a big play, win a game, and become 
him, right? <laughs> yeah, look, I think when you have a guy like Patrick Mahomes, he's going to spread it. It doesn't sound right when I say it. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Like, I'm saying, I'm saying to myself, it doesn't, right. it doesn't work, I love right? you, but let's just I'm going to cross that off. Yeah, yeah, it's I'm going to cross that off. I said it's part of your growth. Well, I said because I just want to fit in, but when you said it to Kobe, was like, yeah, I'm glad he took a sharpie out. He's making a note, like, no more him. Note to self. Yeah, I can take that one. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Good. All right, I have a checklist of words I try to sound him. But you got you got all these guys that you, Travis Kelsey or I'm sorry, Patrick Mahomes talked about yeah. it even going into last season. Like, well, I don't know who it can be anybody from week to week. That's his approach. Like, you got MVS, you got Justin Ross, you got, you know, Kadarius Tony, obviously Sky Moore, Noah Gray. All these guys are better because of the guy under center and your point, Andy Reid. Now, just flip the script real quick. You know, one of the best parts of the Kansas City Chiefs uh, mini dynasty here is the fact that come fourth quarter, they've got a beast on defense. They've got a guy that wins games. Much like you talk about quarterback winning games, Chris Jones has been that guy, top five defensive player in all of football, right? Not having him on the field. If we all agree that this is going to be a good game, and Kansas City's not just going to show up and blow Detroit out because Detroit's too good for that right now, who's going to make the play on the other side of the ball where Chris Jones would have? You know, first thing, uh, first down on the 40 yard line, we got to keep them out of field goal range. Bang, Chris Jones with a sack. Or a forced fumble, that kind of thing. I don't know who steps up and replaces a guy that good. Well, they got a rookie out of Purdue named George Kalafakis. I, I, I'm horrible with his name. I apologize for that. But they also have Mike Dana, two guys who I feel can substitute the impact that Chris Jones. But, however, Chris Jones, he, listen, he's a mountain of a man. He's 6'5", 2", whatever, who can collapse a pocket with a double team on him. So there won't be that immediate guy, but there will be some one or two guys on that defensive line that can have that type of impact. And I give Chris Jones credit. The Chiefs had their annual visit to a local hospital for a big charity. Chris Jones, although he's fighting them about money, uh, showed up for it and uh, spoke for the first time publicly. And what was amazing about this is he did something that's very hard to do. As a multimillionaire, he tried to make himself relatable to the <laughs> average guy out there who, after a couple of years, goes into the boss and says, please, sir, may I have some more? Here's Chris Jones outside a local hospital in Kansas City. Go ahead. What can I say? Um, opinions are like buttholes. Everybody got them and they all stink, right? So, you know, um, and some going to like it, some going to respect it, and some is going to dislike it. Um, that's just the way it is. You can't make everybody happy, unfortunately. Um, as much as you try to do and as much as you try to appease people, you're not going to make everyone happy, unfortunately. I'm sorry. And I'm just asking for a raise. Yeah, I like you know, the rest of us. Yeah, like a server you know, at Denny's. Annual, That's for a race. annual review. Yeah, yeah. I, I went to my boss. Uh, I am making $18 million this yep. year, but I want, I want a little more. Yeah. Uh, look, I get it. I respect it. And when you see what Nick Bosa got, which I know we're going to get to in a second, if I'm Chris Jones, um, I'm on the phone with my agent. Tell Kansas City that's what I want, right? Something along those lines. That brings us to our second headline. Yeah. Great transition. I do what I do. Nick Bosa <laughs> signed a five-year, potentially $170 million deal. Crazy. $122 guaranteed Ooh. dollars. Yeah. $122 million in the deal. <laughs> And his head coach, Kyle Shanahan, seemed pretty relieved about this development. You think? The head coach. <laughs> you, don't, you try not to think about it much because it's not, it's not really in my control, and you just got to let the process play itself out. Once um, it kind of went through the weekend, I just kind of got in my mind that we weren't playing with them. Um, so, because if I would have gone back and forth, that would have been miserable. So I just decided we weren't. Um, I think our team was ready to not, and we were, that was our mindset this way. And um, it was a hell of a bonus to just get told that coming in here. So well, look, I'm obviously real excited about it. Yeah, I, he, I think he's been dead on this in the, the few public comments he's made throughout the last couple of weeks. And that is, you know, we always said these things typically get done right before the start of the season. So I'm not worried. Maybe I'm a little worried, but I'm not worried. Because John Lynch, I'm sure, is in, in his ear every day saying, we made progress. We made progress. We're going to get it done. We're close, whatever the case may be. Here's a memo to all defensive ends out there in football today. 18.5 is a big number. And why is it a big number? Because that's how many sacks Nick Bosa had last year. Oof. If you have 18 and a half sacks, you get $200 million from an NFL team. That's what this is all about. And then when you consider the fact that while Nick Bosa uh, is now the highest paid defensive player in the history of the league, his brother, 
drops down to second place. And I can say for all of us out there, <laughs> Mrs. Bosa has a special womb. I'll say that. I don't know what goes on inside that right there, but whatever, whatever juices are flowing, I want a little taste. A little taste because <laughs> Nick and Joey Bosa are now the two highest paid defensive players in the history of our great sport, the NFL. <laughs> listen, I, yeah. I, listen. We no don't... offense to your mom. She did a great job. Thank you, mom. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I do got to say this, man. What's, what's going to be interesting is there's no more D'Amico Ryans, right? Because now mm. he's with the Texans. Head coach of the mm -hmm. Texans. Yeah, and it, he was a big factor for the success of Bosa because what he schematically where he put him how he coached him up the love that he put into Bosa that's why he had the 18.5 sacks now Steve Wilkes is now the guy so that's schematically we got to see what that looks like for Bosa but overall man you you, you hit it right ahead 18.5 yeah that man over and by the way 15.5 the year before that and we we talk a lot about busts on all these shows right who didn't live up to the hype you know who is a, a bad draft pick and all that stuff you know, this one they got right. Second overall pick, yep. defensive rookie of the mm -hmm. year, led the league in sacks last year, defensive player of the year last year, and is rewarded handsomely. Now, all pro too. we talked about Chris Jones, obviously tackle versus end. It's a different ballgame money-wise. Uh, but it shows you the difference in the two because Shanahan kind of told us last week, yeah, I think these things happened at the last minute because he knew it was going to happen because he was getting the intel. And that's a much different story than what we got out of Andy Reid when he was asked about Chris Jones going back just real quick to tonight's game and Chris Jones not being there. Andy Reid gave the old line of, I only coach who's here, and for what I understand, we're not close, right? But I'm going to worry about the, the guys I have for uh, tonight's game. That means that his general manager is telling him we're not making progress, and that's why you get different answers from different coaches. That's right. You have – you had uh, Shanahan saying, historically, these things find a way to figure this out before knew. week one. And then you have Andy Reid saying, it's not my problem. Talk to people in the front office. That's not what I deal but with. But again, so, you know, if you're San Fran playing Pittsburgh, bad news for Mike Tomlin. You do have to game plan yeah. for yeah, Nick Bosa. And knew. he knew. Of course he knew. Yeah. The flip side is what I'm getting back to for tonight's game. And that is Detroit has an opportunity to beat the Chiefs shorthanded. Whether it's Kelsey and Jones or just Jones, you have a rare opportunity to get Kansas City without one, two of their three best players. You have to take advantage of that kind of opportunity. Uh, listen, you got to win every game, obviously, right? But Detroit has an opportunity to set the stage for their run in the NFC this year by letting everybody know. We ain't messing around and winning tonight. Yeah, and when you look at Detroit, like they're they are very mindful of that. And Dan Campbell will have those guys ready to go. And when I look at Nick Bosa and what he what he provides to this team, it's a it's a lot. And you're able to do this type of contract because your quarterback is not under a long term deal. Yeah, like, he's making seven hundred like, grand this like year. This yeah. is this is why your your coach Kyle Shanahan says, "Oh, this is a big bonus because it also relieves that quarterback mm -hmm. of the pressure that he's going to have." Add it to him if you don't have a pass rusher yeah. like Nick Bosa out there. Yeah. And no joke, if, if you uh, if you want to take a look at Brock Purdy's salary, and I'm only using this as a comparison <laughs> because it's real, Shadur Sanders is now up to almost $4 million in NIL wow. money. He has played one game for Colorado. Wow. Brock Purdy's going to make just under $900,000. Did Brock Purdy go back to college? <laughs> How's it work? How's the transfer for a portal work? Can he but, go back? You know, and there's a much bigger story we can dive into another day, not today, because the NFL starts today, of why great college players – now have a reason to stay in college mm -hmm. a little bit longer because the money is what it is. And, and one final thing, when we talk about the record contract given to Nick Bosa, which is great, and congratulations to him, well-deserved, right? Mm -hmm. There's a guy out there licking his chops. I'm... <laughs> And that's Michael Mike Parsons. Parsons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Nick Bosa got a buck 70, 122, you said guaranteed. Yep, exactly. That means that Michael Parsons is going to be Let's start a two. two. Let's start at two. two. If it doesn't start with a two, don't even call player. my agent. If it doesn't start with a two, I agree. don't even call my agent. Yep, and we'll see how long that lasts because I'm asking for 200 million bucks if I'm Michael Parsons' agent. Moving 100%. on to our next headline. Now, and, oh, Michael but, Parsons is not related to Bosa, right? Both no. We don't know that for a fact. We don't okay. know that for a fact. We're just checking because that woman's got something. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to our next headline, and it involves a little debate that we have here in the Carton Show. Yeah. For some reason, my colleagues, oh, I like Mr. It. Cologne this is and Mr. I. Carton, they feel like Joe Burrow will not, not play happen. against the Browns. He's not. So let's listen to him speak about that, and then you explain why you feel like he's not playing even when he says he is playing. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I think, I mean, uh -oh. we're going to. 
Mm. See how these next couple days play out because you never know what these things are. Uh, I'm expecting to play. Uh, like I said, play? we'll see how these next couple days go. All right, we're what gonna, about that here? Watch this role play. We're what about that? Acting score, right? Oh, let's, uh, let's, let's, you, let's you beat Joe Burrow first. Okay. I'll be the reporter. Okay. This is under the guideline of uh, you're definitely going to play. Uh, Joey, uh, are you playing week one against Cleveland? Uh, uh, me? I should, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, right, yeah. and that's what you got there. That, that, now, if the answer, now let's flip that again, right? Now ask me, and I know I'm going to start. Go ahead. Uh, Joe, do you expect to play Sunday? 100% I'm going to be out there against Cleveland. Can't wait to get the season started. Next question. Nailed it. And that's the difference. <laughs> He's telling you right there, I got to play the game for the team. I expect to play. And then there's a whole lot of humming, 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 humming. Yeah. It's like, look, we all have kids here, right? That's <laughs> You know when they lie. Yeah, exactly. You know when they lie. <laughs> uh, which one of you kids took the cookies? Um, And the kids also, hold on. The yeah. kids also know when they're talking too much. Yes. Because as a parent, I didn't tell you to say that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. What, that's, right, what right. Right. that's what Joe right. Burrow's doing. So I'd like you to watch it again, but now I need you to watch this video under the umbrella of Joe Burrow is lying and he's a very bad liar. Okay. If you watch it thinking that way, you'll see this much differently. I'll roll the tape, sir. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I think I mean, we're going to see how these next couple days play out because you never know with these things, but uh, I'm expecting to play. Uh, like I said, we'll see how these next couple days go. Why are we worried about the next couple days if you're ready to go? It's a lot of okay. the body language. The body language is saying a lot. It says a little hand motion, a little like he's making it up it's, on the spot. It's a very simple question. Why are you waiting to see what happens see over the next two days? if he re-injures himself over the next couple days. Re-injures if himself. He, if everything stays to the plan that the offensive coordinator says is the plan for him to play. I'll tell you this. If everything stays according to plan, he's going to play. Back in the day when I played cards, I would have loved <laughs> to have played Texas Hold'em against him. Oh, yeah. I would be a wealthy man. That guy's a terrible liar. Horrible liar. Okay. Look, I pocket aces. No, you don't. Okay, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the shoulder. Look at the shoulder. Look at the shoulder. It's the shoulder. Yeah, yeah he's by the way. bank head bounce. Great job taking the audio out of this. Just read body language. Body language matters. All right, start it again. Joe Burr, you playing it. The shoulders you, are tough. Ah! The shoulders are tough. <laughs> <laughs> Why is his nose so red? Yo, it's cold. Yo. How cold is it in Cincinnati right now? <laughs> Joe Burr is not playing. No. He's playing. All right, well, listen, we're going to find we'll out. Find out. We I know we started to convince you guys because both of your body language is like, they may have a point. No, <laughs> no. no. You see, you had me yesterday, and I bet on the Browns, and now I know he's playing. We're going to take a point. very quick break. Much more football coming up. We'll do a little bit on the Jets' bills, and we'll break down some thoughts on tonight's season opener, Kansas City, Detroit, and I believe we have some picks on that game as well mm -hmm. to help you get your season started off on the right foot. We've got Willie Colon, of hey. course. We've got Greg Jennings and David Jacoby. And before we get back to tonight's game one of the NFL season, obviously Monday night, all eyes are on the Bills and the New York Jets. I thought it was interesting that Sean McDermott was asked about facing Aaron Rodgers. And, boy, this is, this is a coach that is worried to death oh. about what the New York <laughs> Jets are going to do to him on national TV. Listen to Sean McDermott. Go ahead. There's some unknowns because there's not a whole lot on film of, of Aaron with 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 uh, Coach Hackett and they've both been around each other but never in these in the in the two seats that they currently occupy um, with the OC and the and the quarterback. So um, you know it's uh, it's been a little bit of a challenge for us in terms of trying to find um, you know mm -hmm. what we should watch and and how long we should watch it. Well, that's called making excuses before you get your doors blown off. <laughs> so you're telling me that a guy that's been a pro for 20 years, you don't have enough film on Aaron Rodgers? And, it. oh, by the way, Nathaniel Hackett was his coach in Green Bay. You were there. You know what I'm talking about. You know exactly who <laughs> Aaron Rodgers coach. is. Quarterback coach. Yeah, but he was there. Like, you know what the offense looks like. It's why Nathaniel Hackett's with the Jets, because they had a history together in Green Bay. That's dead man walking right there. That's a dude who knows full well. I I'm walking into a buzzsaw on Monday night, so let me start laying the landscape <laughs> for why it didn't work out and why our defense couldn't stop the potent New York Jet offense. We haven't seen enough film on a 20-year veteran. We don't know what film we should watch or for how long. Here's the memo to you, Sean McDermott. You're a good guy. But here's the memo to you. 
<laughs> it don't matter how much film you watch. You are looking at an unstoppable offense week one with Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook, yep. with Garrett Wilson and former Packer Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb and C.J. Uzama, the starting tight end. So you can make all the excuses you want. That's pathetic. We don't know <laughs> what to watch. How do we stick? How do we stick? That's sad. Right and on there. top of that, he knows his defense won't look the same like it was last year. No Von Miller, Tremaine Edmonds is with the Bears right now. So he's a little worried, and That's I can right. understand why. I'd be worried, too, if I was Sean McKinnon. He's worried, Cut Greg. it out. <laughs> Cut it out. Yeah. This is real. Yeah, this he's scared. I know. No, this is a coach that's being honest. Like, that's what we want him to do. Like, there's, there's no tape on Aaron Rodgers. No, he's the no, goat. No. Listen to what he's saying. There's going to be a lot of unfamiliarity there because we haven't seen these two in these positions. Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay is not going to be the same Aaron Rodgers here in New York. That's the, that's the reality. When you look at the defense of Robert Sala and going up against the Buffalo Bills, yes, they have a distinct advantage because I know what you have. I I've seen it. We've played you. There's no changes there. There are changes when you look at Aaron Rodgers and his New York Jets team. Every team week one are going to have some unscouted looks. You know it. I know it. It's what every coach dreads is the uh, unknown. And now when you have a quarterback that comes into a situation where you expect a lot of things, but you can't just say this is what they're going to do. They're running you the Packers offense. And on well, top of that, Garrett Wilson was there last year. Brees Hall's going to be the starting back. Same off his line. New new quarterback. By the way, you know Aaron Rodgers got his touchdown. No, no, he's built for that. Nathaniel Hackett calls a play, but it's a mere suggestion. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers gets to the line, and he's like, he looks at the defense, and he reads it. So it doesn't matter if there's tape or not tape. Put the house Aaron the Rodgers Jets, is going to get to the line I and look at what, what they're in and do his little snap count thing and then audible to whatever he wants. Nathaniel Hackett is just like, a, he's like a friend, like a, like, a, like a service dog, an emotional support dog that he has around Call to help him play. What, what, what does matter? But the point is, that's what Aaron's done for the last 10 Thank years. Thank you. That's what I'm so about. how could you tell me I don't know how to game plan against Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is not going to wake up tomorrow. He did not say he doesn't know how to game plan. Essentially, that's what he said. No, well, I'm not I don't know what that. film to watch. What I don't know how say to prepare that? for it. When you have a guy that's going to do exactly what Jacoby is talking about, there is no preparing. You just got to go out there and line up and win your round How is once. that different than the last 10 years? Of trying to game plan against Aaron Rodgers, he's he ha that's the point he's making. I, yeah. He hasn't had no. to do it for the last ten years because you haven't had a quarterback in the last fifty. Yeah, and by the, I agree. And by the way, the Bills have to be favored in this game, which I no, love. So, yep. I love because it's an undeserved uh, favorite money out of Vegas. But you know, look, if I'm a Bills fan and I hear Sean McDermott recognize that the Jets and Bills are going to battle each other for you know to win the AFC for the first half of the season for sure, am I at coach? Is already making excuses. Get done, done, Get. Not, done, and done. He's not making excuses. Okay, he's okay. not making excuses. I feel like Willie's right. There's a divide. Yeah, there, 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 there is. There is a clear divide. There is a clear divide. There's there's a clear divide. divide. Right. right. Yeah, Ebony and I <laughs> go <laughs> together. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yep. Anyhow, looking forward. That's, of course, a few days away. That's on it to Monday you night. It is true. Amigo. The Bills are favored. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do the rest of it. <laughs> My two points for that game. But, of course, all our focus right now is on tonight's NFL opener. It's Kansas City. It's Detroit. Before the guys give you picks on the game, and the number has come down now to, I believe, four and a half. I believe mm -hmm. it's where the spread is uh, because of the injury, obviously, to Kelsey. And it looks like, I mean, barring some kind of miracle, uh, Chris Jones getting a deal done and playing tonight. Uh, walk me through this real quick. Is there an aspect of the Detroit Lions offense or defense or a certain player that maybe isn't a household name just yet that we can look forward to maybe becoming one tonight? For me, it's Jamar Gibbs out of Alabama. Gibbs. I think he's going to be absolutely – Jameer, excuse me. I think he's going to be absolutely phenomenal. I think with that big offensive line, they're going to play behind. I think Jared Goff is going to be amazing, but Jameer Gibbs is probably for me. Mm -hmm. How about you, Gregor? Yeah, for me, it's, it's it starts with Jared Goff. Like, I, I know it's not a – he's a household name because we know him, but – what we've seen him do last year, now we have kind of a blueprint of what to expect with Amon Ross St. Brown and all these weapons that you have surrounding him in the offensive line mm -hmm. that we've talked about. 
to, at, 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 at nauseum a little bit. Like, can he still be that guy? Can he be even better this year? We'll see tonight. Yeah, there's one other aspect of Detroit for tonight that Robert Sala, actually, head coach of the Jets, uh, talked about in regards to the Jets in the last episode of Hard Knocks. And the thing that ticks him off the most is when you're coaching a losing team and the other coach meets at the 50 yard line yeah. and says, Boy, you guys really play hard. You know, that's a loser's mentality, like the moral victory stuff. Detroit's lived through that a lot. Especially lately, my boy, you guys gave us all we wanted. Uh, you're good luck. You, you're, you're building something. Tonight's one of those games where, if Detroit loses 31 to 30, it's going to be that kind of situation. Another moral victory. Oh, you hung with the world champs. At some point, a franchise either gets over that hump yep. and becomes a playoff team, or they get saddled in this area of boy, they try really hard, but they're never going to be good enough to win. And that sucks. Yeah, it sucks. But I also think, man, Campbell, who I love calling it uh, the head coach of the Lions, I, I think for him, it's not about trying to stay on par with the Kansas City Chiefs. It's about making a statement. Don't be afraid. We're going into their territory. We know they're wounded. Let's go take this thing. And that's a right. mindset. Well, we are here for game one. NFL tonight will be all over tomorrow. But, Jacoby, you and the boys have picks. I'll only say this. If you're going to gamble, wager responsibly. It should always be fun and recreational. If it's not, then take a break from time to time. Take it away. Craig, you're brilliant. And I learned a lot from you. And one of the things I learned from you is that Patrick Mahomes – has been in five week ones. Yes. And he has won every single one You're of running those. Running out of time. And he has thrown <laughs> 18 touchdowns, zero interceptions. I have the Chiefs <laughs> minus four and a half. Hi, you have the Chiefs minus four and a half. It says it'll be a Gregor. Detroit, give me one reason why. Uh, I think when you look at this offensive line and Dan Campbell, the style he, he wants to play, it's going to be physical. They can run behind these guys. You talked about the running yep. game. Jared Goff playing the way he did last year. I think their defense is going to be much improved. I like the Lions. Yeah, bottom line, they don't lose week one. And, no. and Patrick Mahomes is Jordan week one. So. Never happened. And I, I've been yelling about it. I've been picking the lines, but reading those stats, we never there. So uh, I'm on the team. I'll be honest. <laughs> Look, every pick, every pick we make is obviously with the spread. You know, Detroit could cover, but for them, it's a game you have to win. We'll be here tomorrow morning at 7 to break it down. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.